And we're live. Thank you, everyone, for turning up on this um, lovely evening here in um, Mid Wales. As you can tell, our guest is with us. If you'd like to say hello, please, sir. Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow yeah we've just been chatting off camera and um it's amazing because we've had subscribers from both sets of our channels just recommend that we actually do this and here we yeah. are and fantastic thank you so much for inviting me on no it's, it's an absolute pleasure sir and i mean um i'll be perfectly honest i didn't know anything about you until recently and i started binge watching videos and the more i see the more i like to instantly subscribe so well, i love what you're doing and we're almost at the same sort of level of um subscribers which is i know cool. well i, I mean I, I it's it it's sort of escalated for me very very quickly um so i do yeah. feel a bit of a fraud really i really only should have six or seven if i'm generous subscribers but there's <laughs> no. <laughs> what like russell brand oh yeah that's another story <laughs> no, not worry about that but no no i just sort of it's like i you know i'm still finding my way around everything um so yeah it's, it's, uh, it's a bit it, weird though isn't it because how i started my youtube back in 2012 it is all about um preparedness and doing survival stuff in the woods and stockpiling food and all that sort of thing and as soon as my job come to an end um, as a survival instructor, not far from here, back in September, it was literally right. Realization is setting in. I'm on a mountain. I'm with my young family and I've got no income. What am I going to do? I either make a go of YouTube and just try everything I can. And luckily it's going well. And since September, the channel's just gone. Poof. It's gone nuts. It scares me, to be frank. And no Did doubt you, you've been on a similar path, haven't you? What I was just thinking then, as you said that, I, of course, if if we'd been in a very gentle, serene, lovely situation where everyone was benevolent and kind and there were no problems in the world, <laughs> what would you talk about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. That's a very interesting point there. <laughs> you know, because uh, that's, I mean, I just started to question. I was that's thinking, I, I, mine started in no, I mean, I'd had my channel, Oh, since something like 2005, and I'd put in, you know, just family stuff and all sorts of weird stuff. And I was trying to work in television and I was doing corporate videos and things like that. And then around and I did some writing and that wasn't working. Lots of things just weren't working. And then I thought, oh, I'll just do this YouTube thing around about 2017. And I was just walking around um, looking at landscape, heritage, nature and, and Englishness. Yes. And because, uh, you know, being an Englishman, and I was sort of a bit put out that the flag had been hijacked by um, either football matches only or, it, you know, the yeah. sort of what was called, you know, right wing, because we're all right wing now, yeah. but um, apparently. <laughs> but, you know, it was like the, the, <laughs> the, the National Front and people like that, you know, the skinheads. Don't yeah. mind. I, I'm not a <laughs> The bold explorer, there he is. <laughs> yeah. um, and so I, I just was trying to sort of say no no England's still a place I'm still proud of it you're allowed to be proud of it just as the Scots are proud of Scotland and the Welsh and the Irish etc and yeah. then and then Neil Oliver comes on GB News which is was you know relatively new channel and was saying with the fuel crisis well should we pay these bloody high bills and I thought is he right so I did a little piece to camera about that completely different to everything else and the video I did went viral um wow. And then people just were saying, you, know, you should do more of that, Richard. Just sit there and tell us your opinion. <laughs> I, yeah, said, you strange, know, I mean, I could yeah. easily sit here. Well, not sit here, but I can easily do videos like I used to do. Um, but I've, I've tried a few of those recently and, you know, hardly anyone watches in comparison to it just feels to me that there's a genuine need and yeah. um, love for information because we are pretty much at war and it's an information war and it and it's going to get worse the way this dystopian nightmare unfolds and you know people like ourselves and others doing similar sort of things it's a lifeline to a lot of people because hopefully by now most people watching this you know i like to think that they do not spend a lot of time watching the mainstream media i mean yeah. it's just incredibly controlled and it's scary so mm. the stuff that we find out, I mean, I don't know if you're getting it too, but the amount of emails that I'll get from oh. people, <laughs> yeah, God. I can already tell by your reaction, it's the same thing. Oh, my God. And the thing is, it doesn't, I, I'll be trying to answer emails and I'll be sitting there and then it'll go ping, 
peeing. And as I've written one email, three or four have come in. And I just go, oh, this is, and you look up and it's seven, 800 emails to answer. I, says, I just can't win this battle. And I'm yeah. spending so much time. And in the end, I'm just going to, I've got to walk away from the screen because I'm making videos and editing them and uploading them and doing the thumbnail yeah. and all of that. And then you're trying to answer the emails and you go, actually, I, I would like a little bit of a life as well, whilst as you know, whilst we're allowed yeah. a life before oh, we've I'm got so, the cameras. So and... Yeah, exactly. I'm so glad you said that because, you know, doing things like this, I mean, even when I spoke to Gavin before we'd done the talk about the um, the debt recovery thing on last yeah. night's live stream, when we had a little chat for 10, 15 minutes like we did before we come on, and he just said, just how do you keep putting content out all the time, all the time, all the time? I'll just say, well, I must be in a fortunate position because I spoke to my dad about this, who still lives down in Portsmouth. And I lost my mum in 2020, just before the COVID thing started. And um, he said, you get it from your mum. She had the a knack of just literally switching everything off and doing what you need to do. And nothing really affects me. It's almost like you're in a horse race and you've got the blinkers on and you're not worried about the crowd and what you just focused on jumping the next fence. And yeah. that's what I try and do is to set my goals up for the day and even if I look like I'm not going to do them, if something tells me, look, Darren, you need a rest, just stop. doesn't matter. And I do. I just always listen to my instinct now. And if I want to go out around the, the mountains with my son, you know, in 80 mile an hour winds in the howling rain. Then oh, fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fantastic. Blows the cobwebs away, that does, doesn't it? Yeah. It blew our hair away. I mean, look. <laughs> <laughs> All oh. gone. Oh, yeah. gone. Oh, fantastic. Go. I watched it and there it went. <laughs> and there it went. Oh, the old ones are the best ones. Oh, wow. So it's weird because, like I said earlier, there's so much going on and there's mm. so much distractions. And I do believe, I think today, um, there's big buzz in America about Trump being arrested and stuff like that. So it's pretty much like, I don't know if you follow Neil McCoy Ward, who's banging for finance and stuff. I, did, and I, I Yeah, I watch it occasionally. Uh, yeah. But not, to, I find, you know, some of them are just too frightening in the end. <laughs> I just end up yeah. having to go. I came away from mainstream media to avoid all the all the fear. And then yeah. I find that, you know, you go to YouTube and then you say, come and look at our Rumble account. And you go and look at the Rumble account and you go, oh, my God, that's like the devil incarnate just reaching yeah. to grab you more. <laughs> You're getting 200 emails every day telling you how you're going to die next week. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, it is insane. I mean, I just got an email just like you do. And it says, um, it was from a friend of mine who I know personally. And he said, um, check this out. You're not going to believe what's going on in France. So he sent me a link and it was a live stream in Paris. And this guy was literally just pulling every single um, source piece of video footage and photographs of what was going on at that time earlier today. And he was just showing it all. And my goodness, it was incredible. So I thought, right, OK, I'm going to watch that for about 10 minutes or so. And I thought, right, I'm going to go on to Twitter. I went on to Twitter and I put in um, French protests and I put up um, latest, and I went to videos, and oh, my goodness. I ended up putting about 50 videos today, and I'm probably going to do a live stream tomorrow just about that. And it's incredible. And if I can find it, there's so many. And you know what? There was one thing which really made me laugh. And as soon as I saw this video, I, I just kept saying to myself, I really, really love this guy. I really, really love this guy. Now, Another thing which tends to happen um, in times like these is someone will put a video up there and a lot of people would instantly look at it and judge it as it's recent or today. But this video was taken in 2019, so before the pandemic. But nonetheless, I think it's a great short video to show about what happens when you're against extreme opposition and one person makes a stand and does something. Uh, just you watch what happens. I mean, the guy who put this video together, he put music over it. So it's a bit comical, but it's off. I absolutely love it. So. <laughs>
loved it. <laughs> it's almost <laughs> Batman, isn't it? It's the old know, 1960s <laughs> kapow. I know, I smashed. loved it. It was proper like old like kung fu 70s stuff all over <laughs> again. And like everything else, when I'm when I'm um, seeing stuff like this, if I'm drawn towards it, I just research into it. And I've done a bit of digging up, and it turns out that this guy, his name is Christoph um, Dettinger or Dettinger. And he's a professional um, boxer. He's won 20 odd fights or so, 17 of them, knockouts. And he's a bit of a celebrity in France. And he decided to get involved with the yellow vest protesters, as it was back then, and literally make a stand. But the point, the reason I showed that video is because the police or the riot police were slowly pushing the people down. This one brave chap. Got, um, got in front and decided to do something about it. And all of a sudden, you see those heavily armoured guards just step back, step back, step back. Step yeah. back. And I think that's what we are likely to see probably this year because I do anticipate um, protests, maybe even riots as well here in the UK. So you're really focused on um, densely populated areas. And when people start seeing someone make a stand and getting some progress, others will join in. And when that key thing snaps everything changes but from what i saw in the protest in 2020 the lockdown stuff all i saw was hundreds or tens of thousands of people just going like this <laughs> yeah. everyone look at me i'm in a protest but they're not actually doing something when you saw that chap literally just right i've had it up to it because apparently the story is um his wife was there as well and i think their kid um, she got assaulted by someone in the police, and he just went in there to let off some steam. And apparently, that one punch which connected with that officer, he put him. He had um, a one-year prison sentence, to which he served six months. And he was a bit of a, a national hero by all accounts. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just show you on Google Images, pure and simple. This is the guy here, and this is one of the um, art pieces which was put up basically commemorating um, his actions in doing this. And there is the guy there. <laughs> Just like a big the bloke, floor. doesn't he? He's, he looks a very big bloke. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's six foot four, apparently. Bloody hell. Yeah, like, so you yeah. really wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of that chap. But um, no. I'd rather have him as a friend than an enemy. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. We basically need more people like that, don't we? But I think I might get his number and see if he's available <laughs> as, a, as a doorman at my house. <laughs> It'd be great if he'd done YouTube videos. Maybe we could get him on one day. Yeah, wouldn't that be? <laughs> I don't know where your French is, but mine's um, not so good. <laughs> uh, bonjour, monsieur. Uh, bonjour. Come in. It's very nice to see you. Do sit down. <laughs> uh, have a nice Absolutely. cup of tea. I know. And do you know what um, What would be good to chat about? Because I've had tons of emails, just like you have probably, and there has been um, a flurry of videos about this topic. And it's about these... Um, emergency alert things that we've been getting on our phones oh um, yeah like we chatted about earlier i've done a video about it seven months ago and the amount of emails coming to me basically telling me you must have heard about this you've got to share it i said i've already done it seven months ago but i've done it again i've done a video the other day and it was quite funny guys because when richard and myself was just chatting before we come on air i said to him when i found out seven months ago the first thing i had done was i found out how to disable the notifications so when I done that, I heard um, from someone who emailed me two or three days ago now, said, check your notifications. And I did. And guess what happened? All of the notifications were set to on again, even though I turned them all off seven months ago. So anyone who has done this um, a while ago, my advice would be to check them daily. Maybe when you wake up in the morning or when you go to bed, just double check. And Richard, well, I'll let Richard take over and tell me what happened to you. So there we are. We're chatting away. And he says, and I said, oh, yes. Well, I, funnily enough, I did mine pretty much the same day when I heard about this. I thought, oh, I'm not participating in this nonsense. Thanks very much. There must be a way. Went online, found my phone. Oh, yeah, do this, do that. Right. Bang. Done it. Great. And I was all like, yeah, I've done my phone. I've turned it off. Then my girlfriend, Julia, says, she says, how did you do your phone thing? I can't find it. I said, oh, hang on. Let's have a look. And hers is the same model, but it's in a different place, which was a bit strange. So I, anyway, I went, oh, what did I do now? How did I get there? Oh, yeah, there we go. Uh, and I said, oh, your phone's on and it's greyed out, so you can't change it. How strange. Look, mine's mine's all off. Look, And then I saw mine was actually now greyed out 
and switched on again and i wow. can't turn it off wow so if any of you guys are watching now in the comments or sorry in the chat or even if you're watching on a replay can you put a comment underneath so when i get around to it i can check and it'd be very interesting to see if this occurrence has happened to other viewers out there it'd be very interesting to find out about that wouldn't it because it's something we need to keep an eye on seriously because like me and i, I guess richard as well we have um, some concerns about this alert, which is coming out on the 23rd of April next month. Um, and they said early evening, so I deemed it between 6 and 8 p.m. Someone said to me recently, no, it's going to be between 5 and 7. So since then, I've decided, you know what I'm going to do? When I go to bed on the 22nd, I'll leave it around midnight. I'm literally going to turn my phone off, wrap yeah, it up in yeah. foil, put it in a drawer and forget about it for 24 hours do you think now, do you, i was just thinking sorry to interrupt you darren it yeah, just yeah. suddenly occurred to me that if everybody did that think how much uh money would not be you know people wouldn't go okay, turn my phone off and actually <laughs> the amount of trading that wouldn't happen on that day because everyone's turned their phone off and buried it somewhere and gone i'm not <laughs> touching that i'm not going online i'm not doing anything it would it would hit the economy quite quite severely wouldn't it that's incredible. And yeah, do you know, we've just got this um, um, comment uh, I've just pulled up. And it says, get a Nokia 2G phone. Um, it's still in place until 2029. Now, yes, I have um, four um, Nokia 3210s, which are um, the 2G phones. They've all got new batteries. They've all got their own chargers. And we've got pay-as-you-go SIM cards already. They've been in a carry bag for about five years now. So they just sat there. But interestingly enough, I spent... 13 years working in the railway um, industry and because i was heavily involved in the um, signaling infrastructure network what i was told by a guy who was working with on the installation team one day was the entire network rail infrastructure runs on 2g and if they decided to upgrade it to 4 or 5g it will take a minimum of 10 years to do now even if they'd done that last year you still got, like our guy says here, till 2029. So there's ample time if you're really bugged about all of this privacy stuff. Absolutely go for one of those. I mean, you can phone and you can text. You've got calendars and little silly games. You made a little snaky game. Oh, stuff. yeah. But, you know, you won't be able to access any of the apps which we all use. And to be frank, most of us do. Ooh. I mean, I'm on Instagram and Twitter and all the other things. So to turn your back on that would be very difficult because... Whether you like it or not, most of us are probably addicted to it. So even the notion which I put out there to switch your phone off for 24 hours on that day is going to be very hard for some people, and myself included. You know, I'm going to be out with my son. Oh, that's, that'll make a wicked picture. Oh, I can't turn my phone on. Yeah. And you just have to just think, do you know what? Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, there was a time before smartphones. I'm, I'm just going to go back I'm in just... time for one day. I'm just looking at, uh, here we go, some, look at what they used to look like. I know, it's incredible, <laughs> look at that. Look at those. <laughs> Happy days. Gosh, I did have, I had, I've got an old flip phone, I'm just looking to see if I got it, but I haven't got the power lead. And I, and the thing mm. is, the, the SIM cards are so they're different big. now. And yeah, they're too big to, mm. or they're, too, yeah, they, they're, they're, they're small little things now, aren't they, or big, or whichever yeah. way around it is. Um, but, but the thing that... card, they're quite big, but you pop out that tiny little thing. If you're very careful, you take it out, you can actually clip it back in and put it in there. Ah, oh, right. Okay. I, I well, just I thought, do. oh, sorry, mate. Yeah, go on. Well, I was going to say, I might have to get an old CB radio, yeah, you know, the old 10 4 rubber duck and all of that, you know, just to <laughs> yeah. stay in touch with my girlfriend who's 30 uh, three miles away and sort of, you know, that would she, work. She, she, she did, yeah, yeah. Do you know, I actually tried that because when I um, entered my journey into preparedness, I got, um, I don't know if you ever saw um, Top Gear when it was on TV, when Top Gear was good. Um, and they done a test on um, a Hilux, Toyota Hilux pickup truck. And they, you can watch it on YouTube. And I strongly advise everyone watch that video. It's called How to Kill a Hilux, right? Put it into YouTube and watch it. And if you want to see, a really good solid demonstration of how tough a vehicle can be that's it and on the back of that video two weeks later i went out and bought one right and i'll tell you what i put that thing through hell and back and it just laughed and in that time i installed the cb radio because i used to be back on cb back in the 80s like some of us were 
Mm. And it was interesting, but the only thing which I come to realize in that time in 2012 was the only people using CBs was Polish taxi drivers. <laughs> no one else was on there. It's incredible. So wow. you can use CB, but um, there, there's going to be no privacy. Yes, you've got 40 channels. Um, you start on channel 19. If you use sideband, you can switch to those, etc. But it's a very basic, um, very crude way of communication. But nonetheless, absolutely valid point there, Richard, for sure. CB, absolutely. Um, the thing that we were talking about was while we can, uh, before we came on air, we were chat chatting about whilst we know that this emergency thing is coming on the 23rd and we got a rough time scale and we know it's a test so we can all go, right, I'm going to not bother or I'm going to see what it's like or whatever it is. It's when it's, you don't know it's going to happen. And so having done the test, you know, a, a week or two later or a month or whenever, and I don't think it would be too long till they start using it. And suddenly you'd be in the supermarket trying to buy some apples and pears or what have you. And suddenly it goes off and you may have turned yours off, but everybody else's will be going off all around you. And everyone will be going, oh, oh, my God. No, what's no, no, no. And they'll all be panicked. And then, it, you know, whatever the message is, get down <laughs> on the floor now, as like might be the thing, or evacuate the building. And, and everyone will be complying. And you'll be standing there going, what are you all doing? <laughs> Why are you? Yeah. Why are you doing whatever it is? Oh, well, thank you for that donation by um, Ask Jessica. That's awesome. Um, USA, my phone was off in the United States. Alerts to phone um, that are on off and will be received. Yeah, they've had similar things. In fact, I think the the American guys and girls have had this system for a while now, and it's just starting to. It's like most things, Richard, isn't it? What happens in America over time, it ends yeah. up coming over here. Yeah, like the birth of McDonald's, if you remember them times. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, that's what we were we were also saying. I mean, I mentioned, I said, the fact that it's even in the phone, yeah. that, you know, how old are these phones? And they've got these emergency. So they've already thought that at some point we may need to have an emergency message. And now mm. some clever dick in the in the government has gone, oh, yeah, I know way, one way we can really wind them up. We'll just send them emergency messages every 20 minutes. Mm. And you think, yeah, yeah, yeah well, I bet this is. is when I looked into it, what it actually does is it automatically sets your screen on full brightness, full volume, and the most powerful vibrate function that you have that on you your can. phone. So I don't want to be crude, but I'm on a roll because I mentioned the 10 inch um, black dildo on that video recently. So yeah, I heard gonna, that, yeah. Can you imagine making love to your beautiful wife and just as the magic happens? Bling, bling. Boom, 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 boom. Man, that's really going to upset a lot of people, isn't it? <laughs> I wonder if there will be a get-out clause if you're <laughs> driving along and yeah. you have an accident because, you're, oh, my God, what's that? What's that bloody noise? And you crash yeah. and you go, well, if none of the, you know, the government and, you know, 25,000 people put in a claim. Oh, yes, my car is definitely uh, – I, I want a new one. I just smashed the bonnet. Yeah, I was driving quite merrily and this wall came at me. Do you know what? It actually says that on the government website when I looked at it the other day. And it, and if I can find it. Um, You've thought of everything. No, I've, only I just, I've just thought of that on that. the spot. <laughs> oh, man, I've just deep dive straight into it. Yeah, you are, you are a prepper. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Um, so we're going to put in government emergency alert. And we're going to go straight on to about emergency alerts. Yeah, right. Okay. So we're just going to go straight into it now. And we will see exactly what our wonderful government has to say about just this. So here we go. We're on the official government website about emergency alerts. So here it is Sunday. These things always happen on a weekend, especially banking crises. But that's another story. Mm. So you may get... You know, this is pretty much what they're saying. So there was lots of talk going around. Well, what if there's nuclear war with Russia? They're going to send you these alarms. Like I said, personally, I don't think there's ever going to be a nuclear war. So I don't even think about it. I've got to find um, that paper bag. I did have a paper bag to put on my head because in the old days, that's what you were supposed to do, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, there yeah. it is. I don't know if Hide I under the kitchen table and eat some baked beans. That's it. There it is. <laughs> I'm safe. I'm okay. <laughs> you can nuke me now. <laughs> right. So what we've done, we've actually highlighted it to just what you said there. Yeah. 
So if you're driving or riding when you get an alert, or riding, you not read or otherwise respond to an emergency alert while driving or riding a motorcycle. Right. <laughs> if you're driving, so yeah, they could say um, it's of the utmost importance to stop your vehicle immediately and respond to the emergency alert. But they're actually saying on there. Da, da, if you're da, da, driving, da. you can't read the thing. So that's a good excuse. If you've got to, you know, comply with anything and you're actually in Morrison's or Tesco's, other supermarkets are available, um, yeah. then <laughs> you just say, you know, if somebody says, why didn't you, this is the government here, why didn't you respond? We just want to know. So I was driving. Yeah. Oh, well, you no, know, according to our records, we can GPS you. You were in uh, the supermarket. No, I was driving. I was driving my wife mad. But it did say if I was driving. So, yeah. you know. They could find out to say that your location was stationary at the, the moment of send. So, yeah. yeah. You, just like you, you were at the lights. <laughs> I was at the lights. <laughs> yeah. What, what will goes. all the lights do? Will all the no. lights, will they control the traffic lights like in the Italian job? Which would Where be hilarious. Yeah. Do you know what? You raise a really good point because I'm a firm advocate of the closer and the more involved you are with technology, the worse it's going to be for yourself at some point. Yeah. So I think the more that you distance yourself from it, you know, the, the better quality of life you're going to have, the more time you're going to have you know, reading books. I mean, one of my favorite pastimes is hunting down really old. Um, wow. Look at that. What does that say? The new Gresham Dictionary. English dictionary. That is a lovely book. 1930s and the amount of words that you can find in there which you cannot no longer find now is incredible and because yeah. you know we're homeschooling our son because we Are don't you? Really believe yeah yeah so it's a hard job you know we've got a five-year-old with us at all times and we don't trust him with anyone so no. he's constantly with us so he's a, he's, a, he's a brute is he <laughs> I don't trust it. Yeah, I don't like you, mate. <laughs> oh, your son. He's getting that way, Richard. You know, he's such a sweet little boy, but now he's five and a half. He's really coming out. The, the, see, the thing is, the son of a prepper is going to be a nightmare because if you say, right, okay, son, now where's wh wh what homework have you done? I've hidden it, Dad. I've hidden it. As you'll, <laughs> you'll have to find it, Dad. You'll yeah. have to find it. I'm not telling you. You've got to find That's your mission, Dad. Do you know what he's going to say very soon? He's going to look at me in the eye. He's going to say, I do not comply. I do <laughs> I not comply. Yeah. <laughs> Made him off my own back there. Because I'm sure. not doing that. It's bedtime. Yeah. Come on, it's bedtime. No, I'm not doing it, Dad. You've told me I must not comply. No, it's, it's, it's hard work. I mean, for anyone watching out there who basically does it themselves. Yeah. Now, I remember when the 2020, um, the issue, I call it on this channel, yeah. when the issue happened. Um, lots of um, people... Um, had their kids out of school for obvious reasons and within a week or two they were seriously struggling there was reports of child abuse and everything else they just could not handle it now we've done this for five and a half years every single day and trust me it's very very hard but it's always like everything else in life if you really want something you do your best and yeah. that's what we're doing we're doing our best for him um because you know we're reading reports even here in the uk that six-year-olds you know maybe i shouldn't talk about this on here but i'm set anyway six-year-olds are being taught all sorts of different masturbation things and sex education things it's like absolutely wrong and what's that, going in america when they're getting drag artists into schools and it's yeah, terrible that, i just done a video at this afternoon with a lady called emma it's just gone out around about six o'clock this evening on my channel don't go there now but go there later um <laughs> it was it was well you know keep the audience um and she was telling me there's this thing called class charts and I've called the video, I can't remember exactly what I called it, grooming, it's basically grooming kids for an ID digital future. So that the teachers are putting on everything about them, all private information and health information about the kids, all onto a digital system, which the teachers and teaching assistants, because she was a teaching assistant, so she shouldn't really have had privileged information about any kid in the school, no. was on her phone, on a private phone, her own personal phone, and she could tap in and find out whatever she liked. She could accidentally leave her phone in the loo and someone could nick it and then they could have access. I mean, there was a pin number, but so anybody could get access to your child and know if he's got mental health issues, autism or something, you know, or what, what his medical things are on, anything that you'd consented that you felt the school needed to know about your child. Um, and, and so that was, that, that was dreadful. And then with the, with the primary school, like you were saying there, they were teaching them relationship stuff and saying to them things like sex is only a label. 
you know, male and female agenda. It's just a label, and you can you can change it whenever you like. You're my saying body, that to my a, choice and all of that. Nonsense. Yeah, to a five or six year old, and you mm. just think this is absolutely obscene. So she said, I took as soon as I realised this was going on, took my kid out of school and homeschooling like you. And it seems to be that a lot of people are looking mm. at the education system and thinking this is just training. To me, it's training the next generation. Yeah, to yeah, be yeah. obedient servants. Well, and, and the other thing was she said about this class charts is if you're naughty, it goes on your thing and there's a pie chart and your parents can see if you've been naughty. And of course, there's a red band and it would have to be red, wouldn't it? That says, you know, and it grows the more naughtier you've been. And, and I said, what happens to this data then? Does it stay in the school? And she says, no, I don't think so. I think this is shared to a whole network of schools and potentially the government. And I said, oh, but yeah. then that can link to your... Uh, grades and so when you go to a job it can say yeah well your school history is you've been a bit of a disruptor or you didn't pay attention or you're truant this many times and that's going on into the somebody's future uh, and I just think that's absolutely despicable and that's where we should yeah. be saying no don't want yeah, it yeah, yeah. never ask for it uh, it's it's fraudulent I, I fundamentally agree and an, another concern which popped into my head instantly as you were discussing that very topic there was hacking now like i said yeah. the, the more that you're involved with technology the the implications coming off the back of hacking attacks yeah. is growing every second of every day don't forget there's people out there who have lost their jobs they don't know what to do they can make an absolute fortune being a crook but being an online crook mm. now everyone's information if you was really really keen you could get access to that now my concern in that scenario would be Someone getting into that child's phone, getting all of the data, maybe manipulating it. So that pie chart was, say, 10% red. They could turn it to 40% red just by typing in, boom, send, boom. Well, I mean, the, the, the team said themselves that, you know, there's human error in inputting the data. So you can say, oh, it's little Johnny who did this. And you accidentally put it into the brother or the sister or a completely different pupil. And mm -hmm. you, uh, uh, did I, have I done it? Oh, no, that's all right. You know, time constraints, pressure, stress, you know, so you're putting in this information and, and based on a simple mistake that can affect the whole child's future. I mean, the system is is grotesque. And yeah. I said to her, I said, you know, when I was a kid, if you did something wrong, you were made to apologize to the teacher. And that was it. It's done. Yeah. It, a record of that is not kept. Yeah. You know, it's just between you and the teacher in the class. Vobes, you stay afterwards. We want to work with you. Oh, what about extremely temporary contract, wasn't it, really? Yeah. Pretty yeah. Much. And yeah. you just apologize. You say, what do you say? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. <laughs> you do a great kid. <laughs> I, just, I won't do it, honest. You know, I just smash your tires, let your tires down, break your window. No, it wasn't me. Yeah. That's was my well, the, thing, the thing is, of all of this sort of stuff coming down the road, it's it's completely bunkum, really, when you look at it. I mean, when you consider, I mean, again, the amount of emails that I get, and it's not just emails because I'm on on Twitter, I'm on Instagram. I was on Telegram, but I've walked from that now because that's been hacked and it's not safe. The amount of information I get. You know, you was right, and what we've been noticing at school, we have decided to take Jamie out of um, school. He's now seven and a half. I am getting so many people contact me saying that they're thinking about it or they've done it. Lots of people yeah. have done it back in 2020, and they're doing it on a regular basis. And you can, if you find some teachers and you ask them, the pressures that the teachers are under. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine being an awake teacher in this society yeah. at this yeah. time? The stress must be immense because you're literally being told what you need to do to so-called educate these children. And, and you know it's, it's, you know it's disrupting their lives. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I mean, I did a video the other day saying don't build the prison. And the, and, and the meaning w was that ordinary people are being made to build this prison, whether it's laying the cables or putting the cameras in, you know, and they don't seem to realise. And, you know, they're putting the cameras up or they're teaching the children <laughs> The, yeah. the, the, and and it's actually all of all of us, you know, them as well are going to yeah. be um, helpless in this dystopian future. And yeah. and because somebody then said, you know, Richard, you you know, blaming you, you know, I think you've overstepped the mark. You're telling people who need a job and what have you don't go to work, and their job is installing cameras for the ULES thing. And you go, yeah, but what they could do is. They could nobble the cameras. 
<laughs> you know, they can still put the cameras up, but not connect yeah. all the wires. But in, in a sense, when it's like I always try to think of a positive slant, doesn't mm. matter what's happening. So even on that instance, there is a guy who's working, um, doing a contract work on behalf of a council somewhere, and their job is to install whether it's the stubby aerials on lampposts for the five G network, whether it's doing LED um, data transmission, buddy devices on the lamppost, and all of this sort of stuff, or cameras, even like you just said, someone to have that inside knowledge who happens to be like-minded like everyone here right now, should the time come, mm. there'd be better place to disable it very quickly, very easily, rather than like what I showed in a, in a recent video when I had um, um, uh, Andy the Gabby Cabby, and we showed this guy with um, a disc cutter, um, a cordless mm. one, literally cutting down one of these big lampposts with all these cameras, Euless cameras on there. And that's very crude, but obviously effective. But if you had someone on the inside, mm. who literally it might just be a software upgrade and send it, and it disables all of these cameras, that's absolutely possible. And the more that people realize what's going on, the more that people wake up, the more people that find, you know, our channels and others, you know, the tide is definitely turning. I can absolutely fit it. And I'm not just saying that. I genuinely mean it. The tide is turning because of what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing. It's incredible. And, and of course, you're uh, just for the terms and conditions of the platform we're on, we're not condoning this action. Of course, no, we no. wouldn't condone anything like this. No. That would be terrible if anyone did that. <laughs> and, and, if they, and if they did do that, be nothing to do. They weren't influenced by anything that we said. Just, so, you know. Yeah, just putting that caveat out there. Just putting that, just to stop the... Oh, hello. <laughs> What hello you know? hello officer <laughs> or in my case it'd be boom boom arm please <laughs> no get the catapult out quick i think they've got to get a, an, in a helicopter up to your place and you because you're on the pinnacle of some big mountain oh yeah we have snow like, oh, you're yeah, on snowdonia aren't right? you top man. of snowdonia and you're right on the very you know <laughs> it's like it's, it's extraordinarily windy outside <laughs> 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 but yeah it is because when you look at all of these um, events and to the outsider, if I could use that term, mm. nothing seems to be connected. But obviously, the more that you get my email sent to you and the more you spend 20 minutes, half an hour looking into it and you think, oh, my God, that makes sense. Because that links directly to what I looked at two weeks ago. And mm. all of a sudden, you start getting all of these random jigsaw pieces all over the kitchen table. And then you're starting to put the frame and then slowly you're starting to build up the whole picture. And yeah. that's what I actively encourage anyone who's um, wanting to literally put whatever they want, as long as it's not really horrible and offensive into the chats and the comments. People watch these videos. I mean, I would probably get, I don't know, two, three, four thousand people watch this live. And sometimes over the course of about two months, no, 150,000 people would watch that. And wow. that is a significant amount of people to watch. Yeah. Not just what I'm talking or I've got a guest on, but they're also free to look at all of the chat and read all of the comments. And it's an amazing source of information because, like I said, we are at war and it's an info war. So people can come on here and they can educate themselves and help and inspire others. Because if you want to use that term um, asleep and awake, every single person is different. Everyone is unique. Everyone's had their own unique set of circumstances in their life. They can handle and tolerate different things. They've seen certain things. Some people have seen other things. And together, if people share things, more people are going to learn and come to the conclusion that, yes, it's a global conspiracy, if you want to term it that. It's all about control, and it's heading that way. Yeah, and yeah. It's, it's shocking to see people, like I said um, on a video the other day, you know, I was the only person out of 300 people in a large Tesco superstore without a mask. Yeah. That. I'd yeah, love to see I, them try to play that game again. There'd be well, I, yeah, they would be. I, I, I was, I was in my supermarket, and uh, somebody came up to me and they said, um, uh, "Can you wear a mask, please?" And I said, "Because I, I wasn't wearing one." Mm. And I, and he, and he came. And he said, "Can you wear a mask?" Oh yeah, it was quite, you know, a search. Can you wear a mask? And I said, "Yeah, I can," but I think you posed the question wrong. It's, "Will I wear a mask?" And the answer is no. Thank you. And I went away. 
because it is okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm physically possible. I can do it. I just choose not to, thanks very much, because uh, actually mm. I want to breathe air and not breathe yeah. in all these horrible things strapped to this bit of old That's rag. That's interesting, because there's, there's a myriad of ways that you can um, uh, retort to that. And one of them, which is quite extreme, because at that time, we're talking summertime, I, I think it was, in 2020. Yeah. Now, when all of this first started, like many of us, I fell for it. I don't care. I'm going to be honest. I fell for it. I thought, this is real. We was getting all of our food delivered rather than going to the store. And because my son's asthmatic, I didn't want to risk taking him out there and getting this potentially fatal um, disease which was going around. Presumably and you had Sherpas, did you? Sherpas coming up that mountain with the, all the stuff on the no, back. No, no, this, this is when I was living down south. This oh, is a down south. We've only been there for about a year. Oh, so, yeah. Sure. <laughs> but, yeah, so, yeah, we got all of our stuff coming in, and we got them to drop it outside. We stood in the porch. Now, the porch automatically turned into a decontamination. Um, oh, porch. my God, really? So we was wiping down everything, and we was putting it inside on the, the doormat inside the house. And then we, we go inside, we leave it for 20 minutes to dry, we put gloves on, we put it away. Yeah, yeah, I went through all of that. I really, really did. And at oh. some point, my partner, actually, she showed me on the phone, and she showed me this um, picture, yeah. which was um, put up on um, a North Italian newspaper, okay, online and indeed in print form. And it was showing, I'll never forget it, and it was a video as well to back up this photograph, and it was this um, church, of all of these coffins laid out on the floor. And it's just like um, COVID-19 is like killing people like crazy and stuff. And I looked at it, oh, my God. And she said, yes, it's scary. It's terrible. But guess what? And she showed me the exactly same video in the same photograph, but it was already put online two years prior. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, so they're using stock footage from somewhere to try and back up this flimsy case that this thing is real. And then from that moment on, I'd done a massive deep dive into it, and it didn't take long to go, oh, my God, this is the greatest hoax ever pulled off. And like mm. some people famously said in the past, you know, um, the bigger the lie, the more convincing it is. And absolutely, most of us get that it is complete BS. Yeah. And like you said about your experience with the master, one particular occasion, I went into the post office to retrieve a box, and there was a sign on the door, only one person in at a time, et cetera. So, all right, so there was one person in there already um, at the window, and me being non-compliant, I went straight in there. But I stood by the door, so I did give them, like, two metres or so. Everyone was wearing masks, had their screens down. Excuse me, he said, you have to wait outside. And I said, that's no, okay. He said, um, and the person said, oh, it's all right, I'm finishing anyway. So they'd done their transaction and then left. And just before that happens, this guy was outside the door. He opened the door, and he said, and he had a mask on, and he said, um, the sign says only one person at a time. I lost it. I went right up to his face. And I am not a violent guy. I condone violence, actually. And I was literally, my nose was about three inches from him. And I pulled the scariest, angriest face. And I pointed right at him. I said, mind your own effing business. And this guy, he just shrank like this, all compliant. And he went back outside and closed the door. And he looked down and didn't even look at me. And I'm thinking, whoa. Can we see the face, please? Because at that moment in time, all of the, the anger that I was feeling, because yeah. the only thing I was thinking of was, hey, everyone, this is BS. Why, don't, why aren't you paying attention? This is my son's future we're talking about. Because if everyone goes along with this BS, I don't want him growing up in a world which is going to be terrible, beyond mm -hmm. terrible. So it all come out, and this poor guy, boom. And to make matters worse, I've done my transaction and the woman inside obviously saw what happened and she was looking down, not saying anything. And when I came outside, I've done the same again. Went right up to her face and I said, Whoa. and again, he just went inside and I went off in the car and I was all shaking and thinking, this isn't me. So if fat can do that to a rational guy like myself, yeah, God knows what happens to like we touched on earlier about people were homeschooling their children and they're not used to it, and all of a sudden they're finding themselves, we can't handle this. Little Jamie's running around, and he wants to go to school. He's missing his friends. He's smashing the place up. We didn't get any sleep because we were worried about this killer virus, and the kid gets whacked and stuff. It's just, whoa, we just need to step back now and mm. just to see what's going on, don't we? Mm. I mean, I found it. I, I mean, I was fairly clued up quite early okay. on. Yeah, um, 
I was I I I got very suspicious when you saw the stuff coming out of um, uh, China with the videos and people dropping down immediately yeah. and, and all of the that stuff. <laughs> yeah, and you just thought, what the hell? Uh, this is and because I was in the video business, corporate videos and all that, and, and I just thought, Ooh. this looks this looks fishy. This looks made up. This doesn't Same. look real. This, this I can't believe this. And so I was very skeptical quite early on when it was coming in. I mean, there was a sense of oh, and I just kept thinking, no, they won't close it down. They won't close us down. That's ridiculous. And then suddenly there's Boris with his disheveled hair going, I'm going to have to ask you to stay at home. When <laughs> you're going, oh, don't be silly, Boris. You're, Boris you're, is older you're, than antics. <laughs> yeah, you, you're not on Have I Got News For You now. This is, You're the prime minister now. Just remember what job you're doing. And it, But he was mm. carrying on and thought, oh, he is being serious about this nonsense. And yeah. so, you, you know, we were driving. I was, we actually, my partner and I were at, a, at a, an Airbnb that particular night when they closed it down. And there was this sort of weird sense when we, because the Airbnb, we were booked in for three days. And she said, I'm going to have to ask you to go in the morning because we've gone into this lockdown thing. Although they weren't, you know, they weren't calling it <clears throat> lockdown then, were they? The first few days, it was like, yeah. just, it was a stay at home. Lockdown was that thing that came, we realized what it was a few days later. But, and, um, so she said, uh, I, and because of the COVID, she wouldn't come out of her house anyway because of all the rumours. She said, I oh, know you can have the barn and stay in the barn and I'll Isolated. wave to you through the window, all this sort of nonsense. And, mm -hmm. and then it was this sort of text message saying, did you see the prime minister on the television? And we went, yeah, because we heard, you know, he's going to make a statement. He says, would you mind leaving <laughs> in the morning? It's like, OK. And then the morning came, we loaded all the stuff up and got in the car. Um, and we're driving back and of course there's nobody on the roads and you yeah. had that weird sense that a police car is going to pull out and go why are you on the road get inside you've been told uh, and we didn't <laughs> see anybody <laughs> yeah. I prefer, it was like you know waiting for a dalek to come out exterminate exterminate yeah uh, and we didn't see anybody and he's like this is great you can put you can go 80 now <laughs> it's gonna stop you i do you know didn't what? do I know that, exactly cause... what you mean because where i was living i was um, outside of portsmouth my father currently lives in the middle of portsmouth and from my front door to his front door was probably about a 20 25 minute journey doing average speed should we say and just like you said when this lockdown happened i remember going to visit him and it was so surreal we're talking like um Five lanes, I think three lanes going into the city and two lanes coming out. And I was the only vehicle. And I was driving yeah. around and like me, do not comply. And, you know, the thought of, I feel like I'm in one of those post-apocalyptic movies like I Am Legend or something. Yeah. So I'm driving down this three-lane road. The day no after. Anywhere, and I'm driving across the lanes. I mean, this is fantastic. Yeah, friends, I'm really here we come. Person who isn't scared of this it really is it's empowering at the same time yeah but it's very surreal on the other hand you know yeah it was it was it was just a very strange and then sort of as the days were going on and you think and, and my son was working at a and e at the time and um as this went on he said uh he's because i said well, are you seeing many people because you know all we got, kept getting was the tiktok um, videos of the nurses doing the all their routine. dances and stuff like that and I was going where do you get time where do they get time to do this aren't you sort of heaped up and everyone's queuing at the door and spilling out the windows you know is it it's like he says there's nobody here he said and every everybody that comes in and says um I think I, I might have covid they were immensely right get outside get out you can't come into the hospital get yeah. outside you've been told to go home you shouldn't be here and, I, and he was telling me this and I was thinking, wait, this is if you've got a lump and you go, oh, I've got a lump on my breast and it shouldn't be here. You go to the doctor and they have a look at it and they go, mm, no, I don't like the look of that. You better get down the old hospital and you go down to the hospital and you get it looked at by them and they go, mm, yeah, early intervention. You'll be all right, love. Uh, whereas this was the complete opposite. No. Nope go home until you actually can't breathe and you're blue in the face. That's the only time you can mm. come in and we'll put you on a <clears> ventilator, <throat> which of course in the end, the ventilators was no good. That was killing them off. Um, yes. Yes, and, so, and you just think, surely people must think at that point when the hospitals wouldn't have you and the GPs wouldn't see you that there was something wrong. 
Yeah. And I was doing it's a little really weird bit. because when you when you analyze everything that happened in 2020, and if you still can't see you that can't see it now with all of that evidence presented, yeah. then I believe that the powers that be and the organizations that they're involved with, the amount of um finance and skilled psychologists and every single sector of all of the professors and all on the payroll and they're just doing their best it's no wonder that people are so easily manipulated it really really is and and like i said when you look back at it and you see it all and you think if this was a real genuine pandemic yeah the hospitals would literally be rampacked and people would be dying outside yeah. i it mean it's it, that obvious and then it, when you go into the shops and you've got these plastic screens and if I sneeze to kill a virus, it would accidentally go over the top. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. So, it's the, 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 you know, when you could go to the pub, and it's all right, you you could go to the bar with this on, but when you sit down, you're all right because the, the germs would just hang around here. But when you get up, suddenly put your mask on because the germs suddenly, oh, you're in the pub. They might decide to go and have a pint themselves and have a, a nice time. I mean, it was just the, all those sort of notions of, of how it was going to be was just totally and utterly ridiculous. It is. And we've got um, a donation from Sarah. Thank you very much for that. It's very kind. That's oh, awesome. Wow. Look at that. Adapt 2030. Yeah, I've been following him for a long time. To be honest, I haven't seen any of his videos for about two or three months now. I sort of stepped back away from because he's heavily into agriculture and um, climate change sort of stuff. Um, so here we go. So, um, latest video deals with the new Fed uh, Now coin. Um, they're bringing in um, out in July. Um, central bank digital currency strikes. Yes, yeah, someone else told me. I've had a few emails. You probably have as well about them. They're talking about July for the central bank digital currency. Um, he deals with the grand solar minimum. Exactly. Yeah, he is is a good guy. If you really want to know more, although it's very very technical, a bit like the um, the chap you had on about the Bitcoin thing. I watched five minutes of that, and my head was fried. I couldn't understand, and I still don't understand how cryptocurrency works. No, so. I don't. Looking onto this, if you're interested in what the sun's doing, you need to look at a YouTube channel called Suspicious Observers. The name's Ben, the guy who runs that channel. And it's incredible. You won't get any um, fresh information about what the sun's doing with um, CME, solar flares, etc., and the grand solar minimum as well. So as well as um, Adapt 2030, um, David Dubine's channel, that is, by the way. That's another good one. But, yep, Sarah, absolutely so central bank digital currency you know that is on the list of things we could gloss over and i'm pretty sure we're both agree that it's not designed it's great love it can't wait <laughs> <laughs> can't wait to get my central bank digital currency oh, oh sorry did i not tell you I, I, it's my bank it's my bank <laughs> it's my central bank it's all coming to me Oh, it's, I mean, it, I'm, I, you know, you just got to laugh at this stuff in the end because it becomes so absurd, it, yeah. you, you know, and in the end, it is a lot of it is fear mongering and it, there's a lot to be fearful about. And so, but on the one hand, it is that thing about trying to take away the authority from, you know, it's like if you've got a, a bunch of kids in front of you and they're all laughing at you and you're saying, shut up, shut up, you start, and they're just smirking at you. <laughs> then there's no authority isn't it there's no once if they're just laughing i mean i read this on um in a book recently um a dictator with no a dictator with no followers is a clown and yeah. oh, yeah, you know yesterday. how how weird is that, that? Wow. yes it spreads around and yeah. and i just think that's so it's that if you don't comply what are they going to do they can say oi Oi, come back come it's that whole thing you know when the policeman is chasing you said stop put your hands in the air and you're just going no sorry i'm i'm off please come back please exactly because at the end of the day when when it's one of those cats 22s because i always say to people especially if they really stick in the boot in um about the police i say just think for one minute that there wasn't police for 24 hours what do you think would happen i'll tell mm. you one thing this country would tear itself apart in one day if word got out to every citizen here in the uk that on saturday the 24th of april there will be no police what do you think would happen it would be a nightmare is so that what is that the day that. after the alert because you just said the 23rd oh, no. is the alert that's the oh, alert really, that saying. Is saying, is. saying actually oh, no. the alert is there's no police tomorrow 
Do you know if that actually happened? I wouldn't know what I'd do with myself after I'm The thing out is, that though, public. up until I mean, for a long time, the police weren't. <laughs> You know, if you had a problem, a burglary or your car is nicked or some, you know, someone's nicked your jewellery or nicked your phone in the street, the police aren't doing any, anything anyway. They're too busy no. checking your thinking on Twitter. Yeah. So it's almost as if they, they can't be bothered to do anything. And if they do, they turn up in a rainbow coloured car with Zippy and Bungle. I've seen that when I was in Shrewsbury and my heart just literally sank when I saw that. Because I've heard and I've seen pictures, but I've actually seen it in the flesh and you think, yeah. whoa. The siren goes do 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 stop thief do 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 Hello Zippy. Oh, do you know what that that reminded me earlier on when you were saying about stuff like that? I mean, it's absolutely true in it how we said like um certain things were hijacked and they done the same with the rainbow. You look at the rainbow and it's a it signifies beautiful things and amazing stuff, and all of a sudden you're thinking about you know, rugby playing looking men walking around in high heels and heavily Hello, made up. I think it's okay to go in a school, um, boys or girls toilet and stuff. And if yeah, you, think, you know, what have they done to that rainbow and what have they done to the um, the England flag? Yeah, you know, it's, it's pro right wing now, but at the yeah. end of the day, it's jolly good England and it's a nice hot cup of tea. And that let's pull together and let's smack Jerry on the chin sort of attitude. Yeah, now. The great in Great Britain, it's it's literally melting like an ice cube in a cup of tea. And Absolutely. If we carry on doing these videos like we've done earlier about like non-compliance and just say no, that sort of thing, the more people I'm hoping will be inspired and encouraged to actually do it for themselves if they've never behaved in that way before. And like I, was, I said, it will really empower people just doing it, you know. I was reading a, um, a book that was talking about civil disobedience. And one of the things is people are all, agree, you know, they can all sit here like now and watch and go, oh, yeah, no, he's right. Oh, we should say no. no but, oh, and they all agree. But what it takes is a few brave people to actually do it first. And then yeah. and then people get empowered and they go, oh, it worked for him. Oh, I'm going to give it a go now. Because at yeah. first people are quite nervous because we've all been we've all been under the jackboot for so long that it's like, oh, it's good in principle. But I, I just go and put the kettle on, I think, you know. And so I, I really think that you you do need a few of us. And, and of course, you know, we've put our heads above the parapet. So it's kind of, you know, down to us to sort of be the ones that are going to be with our heads on the pikes outside oh, no, the tower of London. Yeah. It, it, oh, no, hello, it, hello, Darren. Head on a pike. Hello, Darren. You know it's, so, it's so weird that you said that because I, I, I often have these little thoughts and, and how I sort of describe it to people. It's like um, a silent little app that's running in the background all the time. One day it could possibly get to the stage where doing what we're doing, which is, I mean, let's have this right. This isn't just, you know, people's entertainment to watch we are actually living in history right now if you yeah. were to sort of go forward 20 years and he was to read about what was happening between 2020 and 2025 and how much change that there's been and, and how many unnecessary deaths and segregation and, and all of the other muck that's surrounded with it you know we're actually living in rich history right now and us yeah. um, i would even deem it that we are literally on the front line here in the uk in this big information war that's going on. And maybe possibly we could end up in some detention center or something for doing what we're doing now. Thanks. But because I'm off now. I, I, I keep I, getting I, the same thing. I think about, I mean, you're a father as well. I mean, yeah. there's no way I'm going to want to see my son. That, you know, this is why I do it. You know, you get up in the morning mm. and you think, I've got to do this. It's not. <clears throat> It's not the fame and the ego, you know, that may have been in the past. And I know I lark about a bit because you've got to keep yourself happy and uh, because otherwise yeah. it's so easy to get absolutely drawn in and miserable. And and that horrible feeling. I remember when I first got into this in, in November last year when the when I first was doing it and people were going, hey, Richard, have a look at this. Oh, have a look at this. Have a look at this. And you're going, oh, and I'm walking away from the computer having sort of worked out the deep state and the cabal and the, the, the various yeah. names that we can't mention and all of this. And, and I'm coming away from the computer feeling really bad uh, mm. and nervous. And I'm shaking like this and my girlfriend saying, what's the matter? And I'm saying, we're doomed. We're doomed, Captain Mannering. We're doomed. <laughs> what are we doomed? <laughs> you remember that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you're thinking, what are we going to do? And yeah. then, you know, she said, well, you just got to keep going. 
you've got to you've got to you know do what you can do which is you're good at mucking about on the internet tell people what's going on and you're passing the the buck and you you, you know you say we're living through history which we are yeah. Uh, the thing is, if we don't get this right and people don't take the responsibility back themselves and say no, then nobody's going to know about us because history is written by the victors, not yes. by. Um, to, it, it, for us to be in the history books, we have to have won. And so yes. if there's anybody with psychic powers that can see into the future, see if there's a nice old book like Darren's just there that says, oh, and they were these two crazy YouTubers. <laughs> <laughs> we're telling oh, yeah, yeah. people oh, and if I we're in that know, book i already know people that like um all of my videos and a few other channels which i don't really want to mention but all they do is they download all of them and they keep them on hard drives in some cases they share them on like they call them like thumb drives you know the little, little oh, yeah. sticks and stuff and they share them because it's very easy um to be deplatformed, especially what we're talking about now yeah Maybe we're um, small fry compared to that that crazy guy, that Russell Brand guy, Never because happened. we're not being um, removed, etc. And we're not really. What I tend to think is I, I push the line as far as I um, deem to push it yeah. without going too crazy. I mean, I remember, um, like I said, when I woke up in two thousand and eight, one of the guys who I really spent a lot of time looking into was a guy called Jordan Maxwell, a researcher in America, and he was at fifty years solid researching into what we're seeing now amongst other things and um some of the things he was saying is profound i mean he died like last year a massive loss to the community from mm. what i looked into but like i said in 2008 when i finally woke up and realized whoa i need to look into this i spent four years four years solid every moment that i could find heavily researching into all of the stuff we got now now after that four-year period I had a decision to make. I could carry on looking into this at the rate I was doing. And I had a feeling it's going to be affecting my mental health at some point. So I made a conscious decision to stop and go proactive. That's when all this prepping stuff started. But I remember I've, I've made a few notes here. I mean, some guys watching this um, might resonate with um, what I looked into. Now, this is a very small snippet of the stuff that I was researching into way back in 2008. I looked into um, what was going on at the Denver airport, um, deep underground military bases, the Mandela effect, Agenda 21, 2030, 2050, the Georgia Guidestones, HARP, which is the High Frequency Active Aurora Research Program, PNAC, Project for a New American Century, surrounding 9-11, the Trilateral Commission, heavily looked into those, Operation Paperclip, what was going on in Iron Mountain, the Bilderberg Group and Foundation, the Skull and Bones Foundation, the Order of the Garter, which is our Queen is involved with, sorry, Late Queen, um, the Club of Rome um, and the South Pole Telescope, and the list just goes on and on and on. That's probably about 5% of the stuff I was looking into. And Frankly. based on the conclusions I come to looking into that myself and having time to get used to it from 2012 to now, say 11 years, I've developed the, I don't know what it is, um, a defense system to not get upset by it all because I've had plenty of time to process in, this information. Mm. Now, my fear is, is people waking up like I did back in 2008, like last week, or even in 2020. Now, there's a hell of a lot of catch-up to do mm. between 2020 and right now because it's taken me four years straight and we're not even at four years yet. Yeah. And there's people living it right in hell or just waking up they don't know where to turn they don't know what to think they don't know what to do and another thing which i mentioned earlier which was um the donald trump distraction which has apparently happened today i've got a video planned and i was going to do this about a month ago but i just never got around to it and it's all about deep fake deep fake technology is here and there is lots of speculation right now going on with what you saw today with donald trump was completely faked it wasn't even real the AI technology has got so advanced now, it's going to come to a point which I can't remember what they call it, but it's a certain term, where human beings won't be able to different the difference between computer-generated and actual real video footage. That's where we are now, and that is truly scary because they can literally make any leader or whatever appear to do whatever they want to. Now, that's truly frightening. 
It's useful from my point of view because I'm actually sitting down with my feet up watching EastEnders and I've got an AI version of me interacting on the show. <laughs> it's green screen. You're in a bath somewhere in France. Yeah, I'm, I'm just Maybe in the bath. In <laughs> yeah, some, you know, I'm in the, in the Bahamas enjoying the sun and there's this AI version of me in deep state. What I wanted to say uh, um, earlier was um, – this is that one of the w worries I have and why I try to try to when I do my little whimsical things and try and make it a bit light. And I know, you know, I burst out into a bit of humor every now and again. A, it's 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 it saves me from panicking too much because it's a pressure valve, isn't it? You need it is a pressure valve. Yeah. But also I am aware that thing about people are on the BBC or on mainstream media. And they're being lied to so much. And people are, are slowly becoming aware of that. And they're going, well, there's a lot of rubbish there. And there's a lot of fear, especially during yeah. the pandemic. It was a lot of fear. So people go online to find out and check stuff. But the trouble is what they're checking out is people now pretty much free to say what they like, especially on some of the other platforms. And it's, draw, it's jaw dropping yeah. and very frightening. And so if you're not, prepared and you're suddenly being told this is what's going on this is the real story you're going oh my god you don't know you know it's like going out of the frying pan into the fire yeah and yeah. And, and that's why i felt with my channel i had to every now and again lighten it up a bit with the sort of whimsy and I, oh i've had a dream <laughs> i've had this yeah. dream and you know i'm what? talking that's what i've done right and i'll tell you what right um there's there's a guy and I know exactly what you mean. I really, really do. And there's a guy who I've been friends with for a long time. His name's Mike. His YouTube channel is called Weapon Collector. And he does live streams every Friday, every Saturday. And all it is is like um, a few close friends get together and he has a drink, has a bit of a chat, and they, he answers Q&As. And it's a bit of a laugh. So it's just like lighthearted, like yeah. a virtual pub, call it what you will. And he, he does these little things where he puts little funny video clips in just to make it more amusing. Now, I started doing that. Now, I haven't shown them all, but I've got loads of them stacked up. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show a couple of them just to cheer people up. Yeah, go on. That would be nice. That's enough! That's enough! <laughs> so that was from American Werewolf from London. And oh, okay. Sherlock Holmes here. This one's quite cool. You know, in another life, you'd have made an excellent criminal. Yes, and you, sir, an excellent policeman. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah dropping all these things here i mean another one is um the prime minister unelected prime minister i hasten to add um what i would like to do is i like to morph into this character and say this to him who, <laughs> who, who do you think you are <laughs> wouldn't we all so uh, cool. yeah just chuck some of those in the channel, mate. It's awesome. I have great fun finding these little clips from all the films I've seen in the past and just chuck them in to cheer people up a bit because you're right, it is a bit of a crazy exposing this stuff, isn't it? If, if, you know you're talking about this deep, deep. what's it called? Deep, um, no, what is the uh, thing where fake. you make the fake? Yeah. What's it called? Deep fake. fake. Deep fake. Yeah. Surely that's also available to ordinary people as this sort yes. of tent. Yeah. So we yeah, could yeah. make, you know, you could get the current prime minister or or you know president whatever you could we could also manipulate i mean it's it's yeah. it's a tool that we could so say you had a situation where we've had oh, one yeah, of where the, you're going. i already yeah. know where you're going and i yeah. love it well done. so you, you know we get this message and says you've got to turn on your television there's a message from the government and you go and there is you know uh richie sunak <laughs> standing there going oh well you know it's really all very in, ineffective you know as a prime minister going, we want everyone to um calm down and go underneath and, and and already somebody is putting up more of these to really confuse it so he's saying no we don't want you to go down and calm down we want you to get on the street and protest as much as you can and and go over and give big ben a good old rocking and you could <laughs> did you, do you know i mean if people had have this power they could usurp that what exactly the messages that the that they're putting out on television or anywhere um oh, and yeah. yeah and 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 really muck well the main the main th thing would be to muck up the government's message yeah i mean their, um, their mouthpiece is the mainstream media i mean i don't yeah. know if you have seen um a good film back in 2008 i think called v for vendetta oh yeah um, i do remember really, it really but... film. now if you remember on what happened on there they, they literally just hijacked 
all of the there was only one um channel a news channel which is where it's going by the look of it yeah it's only going to be the bbc i'm guessing so it basically hijacked that you already well, I thought it was my channel video. i thought it was my i thought it was v for vobes <laughs> not v for vendetta vobes cc <laughs> <laughs> this is the vobes channel and now you're watching some real action <laughs> I think you can pull it off, sir. I really, really do. But no, absolutely, because I, I looked into this a while ago because someone tipped me off about a year or so, and I started looking into it now and again. But recently, within about six weeks, maybe two months ago now, there was this guy on YouTube, I don't know what his name is, but he's got like two million views. And he decided to um, do his own deep fake. And it was quite um, a good video. It must have taken him weeks and weeks and hours to actually do try and really learning um ai and it mm. takes a long time especially from a beginner's perspective and he actually done it and he he put his face on arnold schwarzenegger and stuff and it looked really convincing so if joe public can do that then you yeah. like I said earlier the powers that be have access to as much wealth as they ever need to buy literally buy people to do these um compartmentalized jobs where they don't really know what's going on but together the guy at the top knows, and they're all performing these tasks with untold finance backing. And it's no wonder that so many people are easily um, manipulated, especially with the mainstream mouthpiece, which they're using to great effect, and they've done for a long time. But like mm. I encourage people, just turn the mainstream off, turn yeah. the radio off, don't buy newspapers. If everyone started doing that, you go to the petrol station, and no one bought any newspapers, and they kept sending them back every day. And then he looked at the viewing figures on BBC. Oh, my God, we're dropping viewers like thousands every day. That would be a true sign that the awakening is in full swing. Yeah. yeah. I remember there was this guy. It might have been Dave, like, but I can't remember. But he actually said there was a professor that looked into this awakening thing a long, long time ago, 20 odd years ago. And he said if 13% of the global population fully understood exactly what's going on, as soon as it got to 13%, it would be nothing would stop it. It would be an exponential curve in everyone figuring out what's going on. And it does feel like we're almost at that now, or we're actually gone past 13%. It yeah. really does feel like that to me now. It's incredible. It really is. Yeah. I mean, I was encouraged by the ULES thing in Birmingham. I, I can't remember exactly. They didn't pay the fines, did they? And I can't remember, it was like either 70,000 people or 70,000 pounds was, was in fines that they just had to wipe off because people just didn't that. pay. Yeah. And, and I thought this is, this, is the, this is the thing, isn't it? Just don't pay them. Don't pay. And the other thing was that, I mean, I interviewed the guys at Thetford who've got this 15-minute city and they had a bit of footage in which they was up against the, um, the I mayor. I watched that earlier before oh, in that yeah. little town hall. And that was, that was brilliant. And, but the thing was, I just thought, why are we paying their wages awesome. you know with the, with things like the council tax why are we paying if 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 the councils are coming up with stuff that nobody's ever asked for uh, you think well what okay let in, yes we can protest and all the rest of it but if we just don't bother to pay them and everybody doesn't bother to pay them they can't take everybody to court and then okay so they give you a fine so it's like well we don't bother to pay that either what's the point yeah. and it's and basically non-compliance isn't it just non-compliance i mean it's 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 simple because it sends the message that actually you are our servants yeah. and you should be working for i mean who comes up with these ideas you know we we know who it is but what like with mps i was only talking to a friend of mine and he said he said do the MPs come up with these ideas for 50? You know, as an MP sat there in his constituency, smoking his fat cigar, going, What we need here is a 15 minute city. I'll suggest it at the House of Commons next time. And, you know, and then does it go up? And they say, Oh, what a good idea, Brian. A 15 minute city. Yeah, that will comply. You know, and you think, Well, we'll pass yeah. it. No, don't bother to ask the people. They won't know, snotty little gits. We'll just do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, but you think who's come up with these? Clearly, it's not the MPs who've come up with no, the idea, no, and it, and and it's clearly not the cabinet themselves. No. There's a higher calling, isn't it? There's a higher oh, yeah. calling, but it's it's not it's not God. <laughs> it's it's people you know who what? think they're gods. There's an awful lot of people that firmly believe that the government make all the rules. Yeah. Uh, if you believe in that, I'm 
or you've got some bad news coming your way and you're going to find out at some point, definitely not the government. They've been bought and paid off a long, long time ago. The government is like a, a, a new version of a Jerry Anderson programme, isn't it? Like, <laughs> dun, da, da, dun, da, da, dun, dun, F-A-B, F-A-B. It is, isn't it? Yeah. They're just, you know, someone's pulling the strings. Exactly that, pulling the strings. That's pulling the strings. It. Yeah, they Did are they? just puppets. And the weird thing is, I was talking to my partner before we come on air, and um, all it really is, is all of these people, I mean, like Macron or Macron, at the moment, he is literally doing whatever he wants. His term is soon coming to an end. And all he is doing, he is doing as he's told, whether he wants to do it or not. All he's got mm. to do is do as he's told, do his term, off he disappears with untold wealth and contacts, etc. Just and like Jacinda Ahern did. Yeah, they just literally move in. Get to the point. I've done bugger it everything up and then bugger off. And yeah. the next one, I mean, I actually put a post up on my Instagram account a while ago um, when Sunak come in, and I just put um, a picture of Downing Street with a revolving door in front because that was literally what was going on, That's wasn't it? it yeah, was in absolutely. Up. And yeah, you know, I I really believe that Richie Sunak won't be in in Ten Downing Street next year. Hundred percent, no. No. And it's crazy, dude. It really, really is at what's going on. And uh, yes, I can just see good things happen, but unfortunately, like everything else, you got to go through the bad stuff first. And that is when the majority of people realise that they've been lied to. Then the first reaction most people are going to have is anger. Mm. And the only way to get rid of anger is to divert it somewhere and i really do feel for the police whether they like the job or not without them we're all screwed and they're going to be on the front line facing all this and i know personally um four police officers only one of them um, is currently serving three of them left within the last six months one of them said to me that there's a um i think it's a county or no probably a city or a town a place called neath n-e-a-t-h in south wales and doing some investigation he told me that of a night time, there is only four active serving police officers patrolling that entire area. That had well over 30,000 people there. Wow. Can you imagine how the hell are four police officers who are unarmed going to deal with 30,000 people just had enough of all this? Well, and I was no just, I, they can draft in other coppers from other areas because they no, but but to, of course, um, you know, th th if people if the police decide to sort of put their whistles and battens, uh, their truncheons down and 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 leave the jolly old force and say I I've had enough, or there's not enough of them, it hmm. seems to me that um, a, a, a secret bunch of um, men of a certain age that may not speak the language terribly oh, well have been. Yes. Has been yeah. invited in and uh, are staying at very palatial services. Tea, no, it's tea and cakes whenever they want it, and <laughs> GP say. services and all of that, ready to come in. Uh, yeah. and, I'm sh and I'm sure that there is a, a, a tailor at this very moment going around with a tape measure going, oh, yes, a 45 centimetre chest. You're a strapping man, aren't you? The body um, almost snug, sir. Can you make it? Yes, a yes. Can you... <laughs> Don't feed them too many of those pizzas and those that lemon drizzle cake. It won't do yeah. them any good. They're not happy uh, with the food, apparently. <laughs> yeah. So um, you can't help feeling that there is a little, uh, uh, um, how shall I put it, a, a volunteer force in the in yeah. the background who's uh, you know commander of the English. You saying that, that's that's free because that's just um, reminded me of um, a comment that I had when I was talking about just this on the live stream. And all it was, I, and I can't remember who commented, but this person said, what if they all vote? And I thought, ah, because mm. the government are literally fast-tracking all of these applications into citizenship. And once they've got that status, who are they going to vote for? I wonder why. The people who open the door to let them in, obviously. Mm. So it doesn't really matter. I mean, I look at politics and I just laugh. I don't really pay much attention to it because – it's such a distraction, it's such an act, it's such a pantomime. And it doesn't matter which side, because there's always two sides, um, Labour, Conservative, Liberal, Democrats, or whatever they are, there's two wings from the same bird. And you do get the illusion of choice. Now, that's very important to fully understand, because lots of the general public really believe that, oh, no, Labour wouldn't do that. Oh, Conservative and Ben. <laughs> really? Do you want to spend your entire life? I mean, it's I know. Still the, it's back to the da 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 da
I, I personally, I think I think the the whole parliament system is is done. I, I'm yeah, not going to I vote. I'm not going to vote because I just don't think the two arguing against each other when you know that they're actually you know they're down the pub mm. together and saying you know it's a pantomime isn't it they've got the script what's uh, what's on this week oh yeah i'm gonna say some jokes about you you're gonna have a <laughs> thunderstruck face or oh, it's gonna go down well yeah. it's all it's all theater it's oh, all yeah, theater it is. yeah <laughs> it's literally part of a game i mean when you look at it i mean i've i actually voted once in my entire life and i bet you can't guess who i voted for oh did you vote for the monster raving loony party? Close. No, I actually voted for Mr. Bean because I Mr. Bean he would do an amazing job as Prime Minister. <laughs> 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 I thought he'd do a great job. So yes, I did, so that yeah. is how seriously I take politics. And like I said, right from when I was at school, you know, if there's anything which I didn't gravitate towards, I just didn't take part in it. And I'll carry that to this day and I'll pass it on to my son because yeah. we need a generation of kids behaving in that way because if they don't if they're totally compliant that's exactly what the powers that be not the government want they want obedient workers just like yeah. george Carlin once said and yeah. i've always said to people when they say to me said why don't you vote if you don't vote you can't have a say and i just laugh myself and say whatever i want because i'm a human being here on planet earth and i've got a mouth and i'll say whatever i want if yeah. you choose to get offended that's down to you well, i'm going to say what i want to say the way, the way I look at the voting thing is mm. it's the business about common law. And there they yeah. are doing their acts and statutes and, and making up legislation, which isn't uh, real. It's all this sort of fakery that if yeah. when you vote, you are in contract with the with the powers that be, because there's that point, isn't there? When yeah. when there's an election, there's no government as such. Nobody's in power. That you're going up to elect, and they're, they're saying, "Oh, please vote for me, please, please vote for me." And as soon as you've gone, "Oh, you're a nice man. I'll vote for you." You've agreed to let your power slip to them, so that they can say, "Oh, <clears throat> thank you for voting for me, you sniveling little <laughs> monster," because they they change, don't they? And oh, yeah, suddenly yeah, yeah. you're going. Oh, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. It's too late now. Five years yeah. of absolute hell's coming. So I'm not going to vote because I don't want to contract with that yeah. mob. I, I, you know, they are irrelevant to me. Yes, I know I they're going. To, it. I don't support it. No, exactly. Yeah. But and I know that to people. When people say to me, "Why don't you vote?" and I said, "I would only vote for someone that I trust." Why would I vote for someone that I do not trust or I do not like? Why would you do that? I, really, I, people need to ask that, don't they? I mean, why anyone now would vote for any of them after the debacle with the, the excess deaths and the um, that's been mandated? What you know? Why would anyone think? Hang on a minute. We know these people lie. They're in a place called Parliament, which is French for talking lies. Very true. And yeah. and they and so they do. Which, <laughs> which I think is why they can't say, why they keep saying honourable to each other, which clearly is a lie, and why they cannot say you've lied, because, again, that would actually be telling the truth. So they can't say that because they're supposed to lie. seems yeah. to me that it's all doublespeak. Yeah, uh, all absolutely. the words, yeah. So um, I, I, why anyone would vote for them? I think it'd be far better for people just to set up their own voting booth somewhere else and go, I'm voting for myself. I put myself in government. Do you know what? You say that, right? I actually, I don't know what you want to call it. I, I would say religious people would probably call it a vision or a little flash image. I'm just going to call it a flash image because I'm comfortable with that. I had a mm. flash image of you, me, and a few other guys on YouTube actually being the government. <laughs> Can you imagine that? <laughs> oh, God. And I was trying to think, well, what position would I, what position would I like to be? I don't think I'd like to be Prime Minister, but no. I'd like to be um, Defence Secretary or something like that. Oh, yeah, you'd be good at Defence Secretary. That'd be, like, that'd be amazing because, you know, I've actually had people, you've probably got it as well, I bet you have, like um, Richard for Prime Minister. Oh, yeah. For Prime Minister. Yeah, yeah. I look at him thinking, oh, my God, can you imagine? I mean, can the first imagine? thing that I would do, I was literally get rid of all of the deadwood. And I mean, yeah. get rid of them, get rid of them. Out the way, all gone. And then you just find people that you know you can trust. That's really important. Everything's transparent. And how they um, got rid of, which I don't really want to elaborate on because I've done it on a previous live stream, which I had to take down because I was worried about what I said. But let's just say they um, made an example of. 
And the mm. example is so horrific. It's a warning to any future people joining the government. And you and don't need that much wood to build a scaffold, do you? <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. So it's like, um, that'd be cool. No, someone said, here, Alex, start again. Yeah, the WF um, like to call it the Great Reset, don't they? But yeah. no one that I know wants to take part in that charade because no. it's, it's crazy, isn't it? So, yeah, Richard Vobes for Prime Minister. Oh, my Carson goodness. Votes accordingly. Yeah. <laughs> but, could you, it would be one of those weird things where, where, you know, to be honest with you, it wouldn't be too unusual in a world in which everything is upside down that by some weird fluke, that a bunch of YouTubers and other influencers and what have you suddenly were the. I mean, what about to old Alensky? He was a he was an actor, wasn't he? Oh yeah, this guy's the, been doing cocaine recently. I mean, my goodness, that's you hard. know. So so it's not completely and and Reagan was an actor. You know, suddenly the next yeah, government yeah. is is a bunch of YouTubers and uh, we, <laughs> we 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 launch policies on our channels. Can you, you imagine know what? it? As, as you were saying that, I, I have to say these things because if I don't, I'm just going to forget and it never yeah. comes out. But watching your channel the other day, there was a really, really interesting guy. And I'm I'm thinking I'm going to try and get him on my channel too for mm. a, a longer live stream. And that was the guy talking about the Bradbury Pound. Oh, and Justin Walker. Yeah, he'd be very, more than happy to come on your show. He's a great Seriously. guy, Justin. Yeah. Uh, all what you've got nice to say. Yeah. Just say James Robinson justice to him, and he's he's putty in your hands. Wow. What a story, though. I mean, it's such a shame that you only had like a half an hour thing because I reckon that guy could easily go on for um, three hours telling amazing stories. And, and it's strange because lots of people who watch YouTube love a good story. Yeah. I mean, to just set that guy there and just let him go, it's like, wow. Yeah, and we did a, we did a very long one on Rumble. I was a bit nervous about putting it on YouTube because he was talking about the bankers and he was he wasn't holding back. And I thought, yeah, yeah this will close us down. <laughs> yeah, do you know what? I've got a, a couple of really good like um, high up in the industry and finance. And when I started talking about certain um, keywords and phrases and things like this, um, they said to me, "Look, just go careful saying that stuff, mm. especially yeah. now your channel's growing because." that sort of thing is really going to hit pressure points. So you, like I said, I try to push the line, but when you get near that line, you really have to be aware. Because if you say one word or two words over that line, that mm. could be enough to just destroy 11 years hard work just like that. And yeah, yeah we have to be careful. Not like that, like that. <laughs> just like that. Yeah, fair play for you going on Rumble, man. Absolutely. Wow. Well. Yeah, I'm just I mean, I've got a donation. This is from Elizabeth. Thank you very much for that on PayPal. That's awesome. And um, I'm gonna have to get off PayPal one day because that's woke backed now, and I'm I'm not down with the woke stuff. It's a nightmare, isn't it? All that stuff that's going on. Yeah. And I, I actually saw um, a document which is emailed to me, um, and I think it was a freedom of information request regarding council tax information and stuff like that. And uh, this is the first time that I've actually seen evidence in a real genuine evidence of it was worded to they stroke them there was no mister and that was from an official um, council document a letter Gosh. back to someone and i'm thinking whoa they're using his pronouns bs and i've heard yeah. loads of people talk about it and like you said about the, the rainbow cars and i saw my first real one in shrewsbury about a month ago and i'm like whoa it was an ambulance i think and it was just we fully support and i call them the alphabet people because it's l g um T B plus what well, I'll just call them the alphabet people because it's just yeah. idiot. Well it's and funny, I mean these it. these yeah. these pronouns and things, it's I mean it's all a bit late to the party because years ago when I used to do entertainment, I didn't do pronouns, I used to do adjectives. I used to be yes. the great Ricardo, and that was you know quite a nice hey ladies and gentlemen, the great Ricardo, and I do juggling and unicycling, all that kind of nonsense. Oh, wow. So now they're they're doing pronouns, and I think, oh, that's a bit so last, you know, that's we've done that, <laughs> we've done that. I'm, you know, let's go to verbs. That would be quite nice. To boldly go. <laughs> That's uh, what you need, guys. You need a real, a proper... Look at that. Thing. It's a beautiful thing. Pick out a word. Go on at random. Pick out a word. Pick out a word at random from yeah. here. From there. A nice old Any old word out. Yeah. Something like carbuncle or... The only thing yeah. is the glasses because it's so small. anti establishmentarism Give us a nice unusual word. Here we go. 
Oh my god. Um what have we got? Um hiatus. Hiatus. Go on. Yeah. You don't what really hear that from. That's just like um it's basically a pause. Oh my god, I can't see it. a pause in activity. So, like I say, you've got so many different words. And the weird thing was, if I don't know if I still got it on here, mm. but um I think I showed it. It's probably gone now because um, I use StreamYard, and if I'm not careful, I'm, I'm going to have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of overlays to show up on the screen. But um, yeah, yeah, so I do have it. Oh, that's that's extraordinary. Let's just see this. Now, this is um, the UrbanDictionary.com. Now, this is the biggest online dictionary on the planet. Okay, is it right? And look at their definition of far right. It's a fringe political movement comprised of white nationalists. Conspiracy theorists, incels, homophobes, anti vaxxers, Trump supporters, and others who are generally poorly educated or just plain stupid. I just plain stupid. That's me. I must be far right because I'm just exactly. plain stupid. So when you look at a fine, amazing piece yes. of historical data capture, regards. Um, what? When did you say it was 1930s? 1930s, yeah, yeah. But has it got far right in it? Far right. I, don't oh, looked, Do, I bet it hasn't I got think far I right. have a look at it. Yeah. But that's outrageous, isn't it? I mean, this is the thing. They're commanding the language now. Uh, and they're yeah. using this this dreadful language. I was, as I said, I was talking to this woman earlier today, Emma, who was about the schools, and that one of the words that they've been using is everything's got to be inclusive. Um, oh. You know, it's all inclusive. It's all inclusive. Everything's inclusive. But that's Please fine. Up, yeah. <laughs> but that's all fine. But it's when you've got like a toddler's toilet and it's got to be inclusive. And then you've got some, you know, 50 year old beer bellied bloke going in there. And he's also inclusively allowed to use the toilet. That's that's not inclusive. And it's like diversity. Yeah. Oh, we've got to have diversity. It's all diversity. Yeah, everything's diversity apart from the thought. You yes. know, it's, if you've Absolutely. got a different opinion, oh, no, you, no, no, no. <laughs> Sorry, can't have that opinion. I thought you were about diversity. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, well, we can have all sorts of, you know, different types of people from different types of, the, you know, all different foreigners and what have you. But uh, if you've got a different thought to us, well, you're not very diverse then, are you? what happened Absolutely. to the universities they're no longer no longer challenging oh no you can't it's challenging oh god we'll never have uh, lily livered kids if we have to challenge them we've got to keep them down they're going to be good workers for us they've got to pay it's looking there far right is it in there no do you know what it's not no i'm not it's, surprised because it's probably it a term far-reaching far farrier far yeah. very farrow far-sighted far-sighted so, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, far right did not exist in the 1930s. There you see. You see, this is what we should do. All live from a 1930s dictionary and all this rubbish that's come in wouldn't, much, be, right? wouldn't be here, would it? It couldn't be far right or or extremist or, well, extremist is probably in there. Um, inclusive yeah. would have a, a much better meaning and, and all of this diversity and all that and critical race theory. Oh, it's just like... Um, it's madness. I remember putting a post up on Instagram a few years ago, and it looked like um, a big dark room, and there was these like um, stretched out thin bits of rope going across the floor, like all crisscrossed everywhere, and it's all neon lit up. And the person had to go from one end of the room to the other without touching them. And I used that and visual image to express the opinion, and the opinion was try not to offend anyone in 2020, because everyone's so easily offended now. Yeah, right? yeah, it really, really is a shame. So. It's it's and and the thing is. Be offended. <laughs> you know, yeah. be offended. It's your right to be offended. Yeah. And do you That's... know what happens when you get offended? Nothing actually happens. When you no. nothing happens when you're offended. So oh, oh, I'm so much I got a right to my <laughs> dear sir. I was watching Funky Prepper and I was so offended. You had that awful ball bloke in. He was taking a Mickey every left center he could. I'm so offended. Oh, well, he might be awfully upset. He did. Ooh, he exactly. he did. Congratulations, you were offended. You felt an emotion. Well, <laughs> yippee! It's true, though, isn't it? I mean, like I say, nothing actually happens. And no. um, the I thing is, there's what? all this bad stuff. There's so much really to to ridicule because they don't like it if you take the piss if you ridicule it you know everyone's supposed mm. to be fearful you know the digital yeah. banks and stuff we didn't really get into that but you know all of this the ids and the, the 15 minutes it, yes it's all very serious and we do take it seriously 
But if all the time everyone does take it seriously and you don't ridicule the people who, are, you know, it's like with the LTT, the, L, the alphabet people and, and the all this stuff. If right at the first time that someone says, do you know what? What would be great for this class is we'll get some uh, some old bloke dressed up as a woman in the most grotesque sort of appearance of a woman oh. could look like, like a mm. pantomime Dane on speed, and we'll get her, her, him, whatever, into the classroom <laughs> to tell stories. And if everyone just went, <laughs> yeah, good one, Brian. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it next. would never. Yeah, net, It would never have got off. But because people went. Yeah, Brian, that's a really good idea. Now I think we'll do that. Yeah, no, that's that's that's, that's the whole point. Pretty much summed up there on that video I done yesterday, inspired by yourself about start you. saying no. Yeah, it really was because once I saw that, and and it was great because how you sort of tracked it back, and it, you're absolutely spot on the money there, Richard. When you said it's all from early early years, isn't it? You'll you'll talk to go to school, the bell rings, and you go and sit down and turn to that page. Yeah. Don't we're look at this. Don't do that. Being programmed, really. Yeah, and we're we and we and now we're grooming them for the 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 central digital. Can't even say it anymore. It's all so it's so stupid. The ID cards and the you know um, my girlfriend's son. He's just been pulled out of school because he doesn't want to do it and she doesn't want him to do it. But wow. school dinners, school. I, I mean, I nearly fell off my chair. Fingerprint yeah. technology to I pay when I was in for, yeah. For school dinners. And you yeah, go, yeah. and they've got your fingerprints at a young age. So that'll be on the police database. Oh, no, of course it's not, sir. No, no, no. Mm. Uh, and you just think... get a fingerprint in back in our day was if we'd done something dreadfully wrong. Yeah. So this is like a, a, an innocent child here. That's their yeah. data. And like I say, that can easily be hacked and used yeah. against them for whatever means. So I wonder if you could go to the police or go to the school and, and ask for a DSAR. And yeah. say, I'd like a data so. request, please, on all the stuff you. I mean, you should be able to, wouldn't you? All of my logins, <laughs> all my logins, and every bit of money I spent, and and and, and all of that. Yeah, um, it's it is it is frightening. It is very frightening. And kids are growing have... up in a world that all innocence is gone. Yeah, I know. That's that's the whole one of the whole things behind. I mean, we decided he wasn't going to go to school even before he was even born. And mm. luckily, then that is a blessing that the two um, parties involved wholeheartedly agree on that decision. Now, it's always going to be an issue if, if one's awake and the other one's not. So I want to take Jamie out of school. No, you can't because he'll be yeah. thick or whatever it is. Absolutely not. Because, like I said, the emails and stuff that I'm getting and even people... I mean, you probably do you get it when you go down to out to the shops and someone comes up to you. Oh, I've seen you on YouTube. I've been yeah. having that for years. And it's weird when it happens. And they said, you know, it's great. We've took our kids out of school last year and like, you know, they're flourishing. And true story, uh, my partner, when she was coming out of a charity shop in a local town, she walked across the street and this little old great old lady just watched them cross over towards them. And the first thing she said to my partner, she said, um, he doesn't go to school, does he? And she said, no, certainly not. And she said, I can just tell. He's so yeah. happy. Yeah. And when I look at kids walking home from school, rather on their phones, six-year-olds or whatever it is, mm. they just look so unhappy, so stressed. And, you know, the more that that goes on for a whole generation. And another thing, jokingly, like you said, you should always put a, a light-hearted slant on all of this. I said, be careful about going down this road because one day these kids are going to be wiping your bum in their care home. Yeah. And I don't even want to imagine how that's going to turn out. Based well, on what and not only out. that, they'll be shoving the, the medazolan into your dinner. <laughs> I'm Aren't glad they? you said dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it works as a suppository so well. No, no, no. Go <laughs> not a tingle. <laughs> yeah, I hope you don't get lost and thumb a lift. But that's <laughs> no... <laughs> as long as they're not well, sniffing it um it? yeah i mean this is the trouble the kids are becoming you can see that with parents and they're saying no 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 we we want to have our children as soldiers of the state mm. that's what it is you know we we want them to be indoctrinated and to grow and be soldiers of the state mm. you know do the job of everybody they're, they're just robots and that's what school is doing it's just making robots and anybody listening to this and watching this and think this is not really the case you really have got to think about what they're teaching them the mm. technology that they're immersing them with 
because I think of, I, I mean, I'm not quite sure how old uh, you are, Darren. I mean, probably 51. in your late late eighties. I was thinking. Um, <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Fifty. Well, I. I no, oh, that was maybe. Richard, everybody. That Thank was Richard Bones. Yeah, very nice guest he was. <laughs> I wait for Most... to come on in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big. Yeah, ah. Remember um, those. Uh, yeah, absolutely. The, sort of the shepherd's crook. Isn't it? Yeah, and it always has um, strokes on it, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah there we go. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, yeah, I was brought up. I mean, I was born in the sixties, went to school in the late sixties and seventies, and I just feel that th that's a generation that, if we're not careful, will never come back. Yeah, because oh, yeah. the freedoms that we had, you know, you turned in. And yeah, you you had the worst that really could happen, apart from bullying, of course, was a, a, a sudden blackboard rubber would fly across yeah, the. I room. had that too. <laughs> yeah, in the late seventies, early eighties, I had that, and yeah, I, I got hit a few times in the head, and it wasn't just a gentle toss; it was a no. full on. And it's like a wrap over, over the thing, or that go to see the head, and you're going to get your bum caned. Or we had a maths teacher who. Well, he shouldn't have been a teacher. He, he obviously shouldn't have been in anywhere near children, but we called him Bummer Williams. I hope for God he's not still alive. And um, and and his reputation, and because my mate and I once had detention and uh, we were in the gymnasium and uh, he, 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 he got us in the shower. He got us, he said, right, okay, boys, take, you've got to take all your clothes off in the shower. And he's there, standing there, so uh, just making sure you're washing all your bits. <sighs> And you know you're you're thirteen. We had, in the we had very similar Mr. Atkins at City of Portsmouth Boys School. We had, had lots of rumours going. He was exactly the same. He was just standing there hanging around. I thought you've got no right being there. No, and yeah, because you don't you, think you look back. So, so although they were carefree days to a a, a bit, you did still have these shady characters. Yeah, but yeah. but you know, I just think it is a bit worse now with the digital ID. I mean, at least. At least you didn't have a camera monitoring <laughs> you in the show. Yeah, I know. That's but one of just... our bugbears, that is, the, the surveillance um, society. And, you know, it just, even if you just go to a petrol station and you're filling up and you look around and you think, oh, my God, there's like one mm. or two. There's about 14 cameras everywhere. And yeah. People... And another thing which has been happening as well, as um, recently, um, when I go to um, Tesco's on occasion, I'm, I'm learning how to sort of use independent shops more but every now and again i'll go to tesco's for whatever to get in there and Thanks they've the advertising, these barriers right? there i don't know if anyone else has been seeing barriers and put up recently. i've heard about these barriers yeah because yeah, obviously yeah, yeah. the food shortages are going to come we all know that don't we we know that do we know that does everybody know that the food short have you not uh, stored up your stock room with i might some, have <laughs> you know but some the things because I, as i know noah's up full of baked beans <laughs> But it, it was going in there, and as I was walking up to this, it's like a green a metal painted door with a narrow one there, and the other yeah. side got no entry sign. As I was walking up to it, I shouted out, you know, talking really to um, the lady on the cigarette kiosk, and I said, I said "What's all this?" He goes, "Oh, we've had to put them there because of shoplifting." I yeah, said, well, right. going to stop shoplifters because what happens is, as soon as you walk near these gates, they open, but they stay open for about six or seven seconds, and anyone who walks the opposite direction through them. He goes, beep, 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 like a car alarm. And I'm not kidding you. I lost count. I lost count after 10, but it went on for hundreds of times during my hour mm. in that supermarket. And mm. I went to the, the cigarette counter to speak to the guy. And I said, oh, you pulled sort of and put up right. He said, oh, yeah. He said, oh, I've had enough of it. I've been stood here like, all morning listening to this. But she said, People won't tolerate it. They're just going to take them down. Because no, no. And another person, a woman, stuck in the showers and said, "No, oh, no. People get used to it." I'm thinking, yeah. I don't think they will. And it looks the thing is, they want them in there, don't they? Because when the shortages come and people are bundling in, they want to be able to manage people in and out and stop them. When yeah. when the rations come out and you get a ration on your phone or a ration book, because I saw a thing. <clears throat> That mm. I think that was the government were printing these ration books. This was about six months ago. No, maybe less than that. Maybe th th four months ago when I first started yeah, getting into it. I remember reading for that. Yeah. And and there was these ration. You know, somebody was head of rationing, and, th and there was somebody sent me said, "Have you seen this?" And and at first I said, "Well, surely that's just an army ration." She said, "It's on the it's on the government website. Since when was the government printing rations and things? They do that in the military side. They don't do that on the public." Yeah. side of the thing yeah. 
Yeah. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. And then somebody else said, oh, well, I think that that must that surely those rations are for our overseas guests who come in on rubber dinghies. And I thought, <laughs> I, well, you wouldn't call it rations, would you? That's very reminiscent of the because uh, they love to do the Second World War reminiscence things. You know, we're all going to uh, we're all in it together. And, you know, it's the it's the blitz spirit. And we'll all have ration books because that makes us all very jolly. We'll have a bit of powdered egg and bully beef and all of those things. Yeah, so I think I'm this is. I think these barriers and things are there. They're now coming in because in what three months time when the Ukraine's got nothing to offer us and India can't send anything over and, and suddenly everything's running out. And yeah, it far, will come. Or, yeah. w the, the people are going to panic and yeah. they go and, and you just feel sorry for anybody working in the supermarket because mm. people won't be paying for anything. Not with exactly. got... it's, it's a two it's a two word phrase which is um banded about um moreover recently too and it's normalcy bias all the time it's there it becomes normal yeah like people wearing masks i mean they wouldn't dream of going down the high street wearing a mask but if everyone else is doing it and the yeah. longer it goes on it becomes normal so yeah. all the time these barriers are becoming normal and especially with these big perspic screens everywhere yeah you know? and i say it all the time you know they're all falling apart and says when are you taking these things down oh i can't stand them then i just make up some stuff oh there's shops in the next town they've taken all of theirs down and when all these um guys and girls working in the supermarkets talk to each other in their little staff room and their break time and stuff and it trickles down to supervisors and they hear in all this more and more people start talking to people who are working in supermarkets if if all of us watching now start off that little rumor to them and the more mm. it gets through they might say do you know what the general consensus is this COVID thing's long gone. There's none of this tracing, track and trace, or whatever it is, and none of this testing stuff anymore, I don't think. And, you know, the amount of people wearing masks in the public is down to like 5% rather than 95%. So there's been an opposite swing in that. And the more that people talk about this, they might actually think, you know what, let's just take them down. And if that happens, that is like a win for us, albeit very slight, but it's something in the right direction rather than sitting back, accepting it, normalcy bias and doing nothing about it we can all play our part in this game can't we really we can and, and i read a thing saying that the uh that some plastic polymer had killed 20 people during when they put all these plastic that the something to do with the inner of the, the plastic had got into wow. them and poisoned the blood uh, the blood oh, system really? and had wow. died i've just made that up but it just goes to show how easy people can accept. I know I've just made that up. But, you know, if you started saying, <laughs> well, actually. actually I've just checked there's 38 died. 38 died, yeah. <laughs> there's something in the plastic screen. They go, really? Oh, mm. I'm going to go to my manager. I've just heard there's something in the in the screens. I heard it's some YouTube. Well, it must be right. And it's on YouTube. Do you know what? You'd probably be shocked if you just made that up and you looked into it and that was accurate. And that was accurate. Oh, my God. Yeah, oh, come on. <laughs> You're time traveling. You're like the Doctor <laughs> Who on YouTube, sir. <laughs> but the thing is, you're right. You could set up rumors and it could spread. And here's the thing that I wanted to mention, actually, um, as okay. I've got the chance, is uh, the Richard Vogue's channel is very good, by the way. Do come check it out. No, uh, what I wanted to say really was, I think that I don't know how you feel about this, but there's a lot of us doing what we're doing, trying to get the word out and trying to sort of help people and wake people up or, or question yeah. things or whatever. Th do you feel that behind the scenes, us guys doing this, it would be helpful if there was kind of a, a central, oh, I don't like the word central because it's too sort of... Orwellian, you know, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all Orwellian. <laughs> but um, some, some, some pool that we as influencers, YouTubers uh, with audiences should be able to network together for the better of... You know, if there's a certain message that we feel, blimey, this this news really right. needs to escalate. Pretty so much that... what they do in the mainstream, because if you look, and this is a lesson for everyone to check this out, guys, it's mm. brilliant. Every single day, look through the major, the major uh, mainstream media. So you look at uh, um, BBC, um, you look at Sky News, you look at The Guardian, you look at Daily Mail, whatever it is, look at their things. And even though their headlines are maybe altered, say the top 10 topics that they're discussing are all exactly the same. Yeah. So it's all controlled, obviously. So what you're saying, which I understand, is if we all get our heads together based on what we're seeing in the real world, not the makeshift world that they're trying to portray, 
and we can all stick to that and push that out there, that might actually gain some traction if it's in some sort of constructed way, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, if there was like a, almost like a, a, a Google Drive, if you like, but not on Google, but as you know, as a yeah. separate yeah. server somewhere that's private, like yeah. a, a little forum and say, these news items, we you know, we ought to push. And it's not saying that any of us have got to because we all have our unique way of doing things but if we could see that there was a couple of stories that really needed to to get out to combat something else that's yeah. nefarious it would be great if suddenly you know <clears throat> 20 30 youtubers were all talking about the same thing within the same week because that would really add power. You go, I've just been on the old uh, Funky Prepper show and he's talking about the blah, blah, blah. And now yeah. Richard Vobes is talking it and Neil Oliver's talking about it and Russell Brand's talking about it and Paul Joseph Watson's talking about it. And everyone's talking, and mainstream media aren't mentioning it, but this must be big because what do these YouTubers Very suddenly interesting, know? Richard. Yeah, yeah. Really, really interesting point that because, like I said, um, the mainstream media is pretty much the government's mouthpiece globally. Yeah. <clears throat> and he used it to great effect, and obviously it's been trying to test it for a long time. And like I said, there's I think someone worked it out that there's only like six companies globally which control all of the media. And that is astonishing when you break down that six CEOs, it's six people literally yeah. push out this narrative. Push they out. obviously have daily meetings about what they're going to achieve and monthly meetings, etc. Probably an AGM with lots of like Don Perignon, for example. And it's going to be crazy oh, expensive. Yeah, <laughs> but I'd I think we'd have to be slightly because because of that. If you did, you know, if we got all YouTubers together and all, a, a collective of YouTubers, you'd have to be very. I don't know what to call your collector, a gaggle of YouTubers or whatever it is. An amalgamation of them. An amalgamation. <laughs> we'd have to be careful that we weren't infiltrated. That somebody then was put, putting in stuff on that forum that was bad and where we all then suddenly spout something drip fed into um leading yeah because um, that would that would because at the because on the one hand you can see the advantage if it, if there was a just a, some not you know some information that we could get out collectively hmm. but if if we then became too much the mouthpiece of somebody feeding that in that would be again dangerous yeah, um, because our it's advantages really, I mean, were all independent and we're feeding off each other and taking ideas and licking it people. Be, it? I think um you'd have to get like um um an amalgamation again of mm. um individuals like ourselves. Um people that have had um tried and tested period of time and really been studied and analyzed by all of the viewers out there in the world watching. And then you've really got a, a decent idea of who would be trustworthy mm. out of the select group. Anyone new coming in, especially, you know, if they're just highly polished, you know, really expensive production. And, oh, my God, he's got like 30,000 subscribers from zero in yeah. four days. That would be highly suspicious from how exactly. I would think. Yeah, yeah. So if we could get that sort of um, that trustworthy, um, long-term, solid foundational base, and there was some sort of method of communication where we could collaborate and talk and pose ideas and stuff, even you can put like a calendar on certain dates or times of the day or whatever, and then poof, push all that out there. And then, yeah. especially if the channels grew as well, more people saw it. We become the main. We would become the main. Media, become the main yeah. We would Sorry? become the mainstream media then, wouldn't we? It because it would, be, it would be pretty yeah. much, you know, these this bunch of people, and you can start to, you know, because people could listen to me and say, "Oh, Richard's talking about so it's all a load of rubbish." But then, if a couple of other people are talking about a very similar thing in their own way, of course, yeah, it it sort of adds credence to it. Yes, yeah, because it, it's more legitimacy it's more behind the the, the yeah. narrative there, and it's basically counter what the mainstream are doing. But it's always it's this tough one for me because I've always said and. I, I'm probably always going to stick to that regardless is mm. I'm never ever going to be part of a group ever and the amount of people that said oh come and join our Facebook group or I'm not on yeah. Facebook by the way so never mm -hmm. will but I've never been part of a group because I learned from a long time ago I joined this forum remember me telling you when I got that Hilux pickup truck yeah and I went on to a forum and it was um HPOC and the Hilux pickup online community i think it was called and i went on there as a complete newbie never experienced anything on the forum before and immediately it was clicky and it was always oh, saying that all the time i came and they've all got their little groups and stuff yeah so i've always said to myself from that experience for a long time ago it doesn't matter what the community is i mean when i do 
I don't know if you know, but every year I organise, I call it a prepper meet. Now, that's been going since 2013, and it's going up to like 300 people. We all turn up on this big site. We all have a nice camp in the summertime. We have um, some fires and stuff. We have a few drinks, and we relax, and we talk about whatever we want to. There's families and kids there. And all these sorts of the raffles to help veteran charities every year. And that's awesome having that. But, you know, at some point you do start to see little groups now like i said yeah. i've always wanted to be like a lone wolf in this sort of venture as it were the second you start you know like three or four or five people getting in the group and two people say who are close friends yeah it's all right but he's i don't agree what he's saying and it looks yeah. like he's going down a bad road i don't want to be told of that and it's very difficult because the only way that humanity is going to survive this looming catastrophe the only way is everyone really genuinely has to set aside all of their differences, come together and just say no together. That's the only way it's yeah. going to stop. Yeah. It's very difficult because of the amount of compartmentalization that's happened over eons of time. I mean, goodness, I mean, you know, back in the 80s, if he was gay, there's different variations of gay now. And even within yeah. that faction, they're arguing against each other. And that's just one small thing. Yeah, and you can imagine how. I don't think the gay people will like you saying it's one small thing. I think you know they, they'll be a bit upset about that, won't they? Yeah, I knew when I said it, but you know, if you want to get offended, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> it's not small, not but mine anyway. <laughs> I tied the weight on it, and I was told it's going to get big, but it's gone black. Oh dear! Uh, uh. <laughs> but this is the thing because of there's so many um, pigeonholes, pigeon boxes, compartments, and it's absolutely done by design to get people to argue against each other. Yeah, I mean, uh, no, this is it. Divide and conquer. Amazing book, and how, and we're seeing all of this happen in real time right now. It's astonishing, really. Yeah, gosh. So that's it, man. People need to come together and don't get offended, and just say no. Stop paying just, all your bills. Just the, say the no. Do you know what? I've done some research, and what I pulled up was the um, the magistrates' court. This was September last year. Was currently three hundred and forty seven thousand cases behind. The Crown Court was, I think, was about eleven to twenty odd thousand behind. God knows what it is now. So, if you are really, really concerned about carry on or stop paying your heaven well, forbid your TV license or your council tax or that parking ticket, if everyone just said no, like you said. How They'll never get to you. The court's going to get to you to do it. Yeah. How the hell are they going to do that? It's not going to happen. They knock on the door. Is, this is I'm 110. Uh, I'm 100, I did that when I was three years old. I'm 110 now. Oh, my. Oh, good, good heavens. What I will write it? the check. I mean, I'm, there, sir. I'm dying. <laughs> dear, I'm dying. Dear, dear. Dear, dear. Dear, dear. Dear, dear. Dear, I mean, it I is. saw this person down in the village shop and um, this old woman, she got this purse out and she must have pulled out about £200 in cash and, and she had all of these receipts and she was paying about six or seven of her friends TV licence for that month. Bloody and hell. Thinking, when money's really scarce, you still yeah. got... And this is another thing. This is quite interesting because a long time ago, I took my father to go and see David Icke down in Brixton Academy in London just to see what it was all about, really, because I was curious. And one thing that struck me immediately, as soon as we got in, looked around, every single type, if you want to call it that, of person was represented in that audience. Everyone. We had rich, poor, thin, fat, whatever colour, everyone was there. And from all classes as well. So you had like a road sweeper and you had barristers there. You had everything there. And it was so incredible what I saw was going on there. And he actually said, you know, at some point in the future, you know, you are going to see people just say no and just yeah. do not comply. Yeah. And it's so weird because nearly everything that that guy said, this was back in 2012, it's absolutely coming to pass. And he actually said as well, you are going to see a dwindling number of police and military here in the UK. And they are going to get private security from overseas to come over here. And we boat. might have our armed forces go to their country mm -hmm. because when they're over here, they're not going to care because it's not their homeland, it's not their people. So they're literally going to carry out orders, a piece of cake. And it looks like that's actually being positioned as we're speaking right now. And I've heard reports of lots of these cases, people 
like our dinghy <laughs> friends, should we say, are being moved in at night time in white vans, white lorries, white coaches, etc. It's always at night time. And I can't tell you, I've lost count how many emails I've got of different people saying that. Mm. And yeah, it's nuts what's looked like it's come down the road, doesn't it? You scared me now. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> Let's put something funny on for Richard. I yeah, don't like me it. up, please. <laughs> oh, do you know what? I know I think this will make you laugh. And I, yeah. I designed this idea. I see that lovely fire down there. But it's gone worry. out. It's gone out. It's very low. It's all cool. It's oh, still okay. really hot. It's all cool. It's supposed to be nice and warm. What are you talking well, guess about? what I've done? And I actively encourage mm. anyone who's got a, a wood burner to do yeah. this and put it on social media. Think up of a hashtag and use it, but do this. Yeah, like it. Anything you don't like, burn them. Burn them. <laughs> do yeah. witchcraft, because that's what they do. Crazy. Yeah. But yeah. No, absolutely, mate, you know, it's just it's bonkers out there. I mean, if you, like I said, fortunate for me, um, I've had a lot of time to get my head around this, so I can just take it or leave it and put it up, pick it up and put it down. But, you know, unfortunately, there's people out there who are just figuring this out. And I really do feel for them, guys, because I would hate to be in that situation because it's a fun house. What is this, Lunker? Some kind of fun house? Why, having fun? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Wish I brought me chop hat now. Yeah, do you know what I usually do? Um, someone said, um, because usually, you know, traditionally now, um, every um, live stream I do on a Friday at nine o'clock, I always have a drink and a few people share me. And I think Faye, she's awesome. She's a moderator on my channel. And she said, oh, don't forget, drink nine o'clock. But no, 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 I've made it a rule, don't drink during the week. Friday, no work on Saturday. That's when I have a glass, maybe. So, um, so yeah, maybe we should um, do another live stream again, mate, because it's been awesome, isn't it, really? I mean, we it's been fun. I loved it. I All loved fun. it. We just, yeah, just nattering away. Um, <laughs> my fire is downstairs. I've probably got to go and put some logs on it because, like yours, it's probably almost out. And, yeah, and where I am, my that, little – here, do you want to have a quick look at the studio before we go? Here, look. I'll show yeah, you my little – because some people said to me, is that just a green screen? Is it just a background? No, it's a real place. Here we go, look. Yeah, here we go. There it is, everybody. It's this is the the nonsense that I have. Wow, set up. you've gone fubo of that, haven't you? Blimey, that's that's a professional studio, you could say. Well, I used to do this streaming show years ago. Um, how do we turn this off? <laughs> oh, hello, <laughs> everyone uh, can look up his nose. That's there he is. I can't, <laughs> I, I can't turn this out. This I is the other side of Richard. Yeah, the other I've got to go in here to press something. There we go. Um, oh, perfect. It, it, yeah, so I had this thing, this this show. Hence these things. The the Bold Explorer is my landscape, heritage, and nature thing. And the Vogue show was this other channel, which I still have, uh, which I, I haven't done anything with for a bit. But during COVID, when everyone was locked down, we used to do this. Um, we used to do this show. Every day, eight o'clock, every day for two hours, my girlfriend and I wow. would sit in there and we would, we would try and cheer people up. So we were basically not trying to talk about COVID and the lockdowns, but inevitably it came up in and then I'd get on my soapbox and start going on about this set. And no, the other that's and, really beautiful that you've done that because so many people really did struggle for that time, didn't they? A lot of people were on their own, they were lonely. So to provide that, man, hats off, Rich. That's awesome, dude. But really, well, well, I, I mean, that you know, my background is in entertainment. So I thought, well, what am I going to do? So I was doing... I was doing a video on the I was because you couldn't go very far. So I had a GoPro on a, a little stick and I was doing a walk around. So for those people who couldn't get out, who were just infirm or what have you, I walked around the town and just did that every day. So I put one of those out. We did an evening show in which we were just larking about and sharing emails and people would send in. We would do things. Show us your knockers. Come on, show us your knockers. You've got uh, yeah, little things. It's brilliant how that happens. Yeah. And then people would go out and take a picture of their front door, you know, and then we'd look at their knockers and things like that, which you was great. That just reminded me about little tiny props. I mean, look at that. That's, um, that's a hexi stove, right? And it's one pound. I've got it from a charity shop, brand new. Now, lots of military use these little things. Right? Mm. They're very inexpensive. You just open it up. You put solid fuel in there, and you put like your pot or pan on there, and you're cooking it, and it all falls away. 
and that's just a little stand which that sits on so you'll cut wow. it that way it goes on there now it's really weird because when i've done a few videos in the other house i was living at i called it the bunker because it was practically underground this brick structure we had at the bottom of the garden and when i used to start um, a live stream as it were back then or a video i'd always start in mid-conversation i'll be saying yeah hello no problem yeah yeah just make sure i can't be too long because i'm on air now so don't worry about it i'll send you a text as soon as right all right see you later bye and i put it down and i was to say oh that was so and so on the hexi phone and someone said to me so where'd you get these phones from and it's quite clearly that it's not a phone <laughs> it's not a phone you are portraying that as a phone yeah like, oh my god this is just this is scary because it, it seems to be whatever people see on the screen they just believe this yeah is it's, it's i know it's it's it's, uh, it's amazing um the other thing we did during lockdown was i was reading books to people so i set oh. up a, another youtube channel so i mean i was just working nuts and i was doing this every day and i was reading old books uh, about England because that was what my thing was. So we we read you know lots of J B Priestley and um, H V Morton and also because one we should have read was 1984. It would have prepared everybody. <laughs> that would have cheered people up. Wouldn't it? I've read that and Brave New World. They're great books. Yeah. So uh, we were just reading. I was just sitting there on something called Listen with Vobes, which is still there. People can check it out. Listen Wait, with Vobes. Oh, they still up online today. Yeah, the Vobe Show and um, Listen with wow. Vobes. So and, and if any of the guys watching now, if anyone wanted to check back for it and watch some of those, how would they find it? Um, very, uh, let's see, I'll just see if I can uh, see. Uh, let's go into and That YouTube. sounds really good because, like I say, you know, helping people at a time like that, that's really, really good. And it's strange because I've done similar things. You know, when you said you went with your GoPro for a walk. And I used to do the same thing. I used to go out to the woods and, and I would say, you know, this is for all of you guys and girls, especially if you're disabled and you used to go out, but you can't get out. I'm just taking you with me. And I'd go out for a walk around the woods and I'd start a fire and put a shelter up, make a nice, nice cup of tea, that sort of thing. And yeah, it, people really liked it. And this looks like I've met my twin brother here doing a similar <laughs> thing. Wow. -wee. Here we go. Just hundreds of these. Uh... There you go, but, guys. If you want to check these out, they're all there. It's all there. We had Listening well, with folks. 365 subscribers. Look at that. Yeah, that um, will change soon. You watch. Come on, guys. Get on there. I'm going to subscribe myself after this. And you watch that. <laughs> That'll be a thousand tomorrow. Get I mean, I hadn't. The last one, well, two years ago was when we fin finished. Was it two years? Yeah, two years ago. Yeah. Hadn't done anything since. Um, and then the Vogue show. Let's see. Is there's, Where's the Vogue show? I go in in there. This is all on. Oh look, there's. <laughs> <laughs> I do that yeah, for a reason because I've got a lot yeah. of elder, elderly viewers, and they can really see it easy when it's even big letters. There, so. Yeah, no, I think that's brilliant. I think that's mm -hmm. brilliant. They're just trying to. Where's the here we go? The Vogue show is that. Mm -hmm. So I've got lots of little stories on there at the moment, but we had oh under live here Someone's we go. We had dropped already. Oh really? Yeah. We had all these all these mad. Here's a typical moved. Here it is. <laughs> I, I love I love people who just don't care what people think. I, I think don't care. Should be, dude. Really do. Well, we um, check it out. Partner in crime. That's partner in crime. I'd get my partner on it, but she would. She's so private. She would never ever go on YouTube. Really. She did appear on a few videos when we first got together and you saw glimpses of her. Um, yeah, that was fun back in 2016, 17, 2017, that would be. So, yeah, that's great to see, mate. That's really cool. Oh, really good. Cool. It was all good fun. Yeah, so so that's why the studio is, was really built because we were doing these shows and we just sort of did it. And, um, and then when I started to do this, I thought, oh, I could do the interviews up here. And, yeah. and any and any That's live things because because all the gear was made yeah. and then the, the other stuff the monologues just work pretty well downstairs which again someone said is that green screen it's like no it's just actually <laughs> i have to set the bloody lights and the camera every day and set yeah, it up yeah. and then i do my monologue That's what I do here. I mean, this is this is this is my cottage and you know i've got a massive great big old-fashioned antique pine table and it all gets cleared it all gets set up and plugged in. When it's finished, it all gets put away again. Yeah. I'd love to have my own studio. That is one thing that I'd really love. So I'm just going to really push this YouTube um, stuff. 
and also the, the website which is currently being worked on now that should be ready within the next month or two maybe and once that's done hopefully that will take off like the guys working behind the scenes think it will and that'll provide enough funds for me to probably move into a bigger property and maybe have some sort of um space for myself to do this because yeah it all feels temporary like most of us just go through life and things change but it'd be nice to settle somewhere for five years nice big space to do stuff it's fun being quietly like every english yeah. should have access to i'm sure absolutely you'd agree. absolutely yeah. <laughs> i've really enjoyed it thank you so much yeah me too Karen. i think it's we're going to be great signing great. off because we got things to do and I, I could literally talk to you for donkey's ear so i think we'll, we'll I... definitely do this again soon mate it's been yeah great. well if i get if i get into wales i'll have to come up and see you yeah, come 100%. Up, come up and see me sometime. Yeah, we'll be popping down to Portsmouth to see the old man, so we could swing over to Worthing and say hi. Yeah, come and have great. chips on the pier. It'd be great. you love it. <laughs> good, old, good old days. <laughs> good old days. As if nothing, as if there's no worries at all. Yeah, it's your life. Live it, isn't it? Fish yeah. and chips on the beach. Nothing wrong with that, sir. It's actually Fantastic. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, okay, then, people. So, um, it's been great having Richard on here. Seriously, really, really good. And um, I'm pretty sure we're going to do more of these in the future. So if you really liked what you saw, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and don't forget that notification bell on all notifications so you won't miss any of these updates which will just ping up. Every single person who's um, commented on the chat section have been awesome. All of you guys watching on the replay, really appreciate you spending your time because, after all, time is the most precious commodity. And I always Cheers. seriously appreciate it. Um, everyone who's donated as well, both on PayPal and on the chat, that really helps that like you wouldn't believe. And last but not least, the moderators. You guys are literally the glue that holds this vehicle together. And without you, I don't think we could do this. So a big shout out to you guys. And last but not least, our learned friend, Mr. Richard Vobes. It's been a pleasure, sir. It's been, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. We've had a good old chat as if we've been mates for yeah. years, That's which is great, be. isn't it? Yeah. yeah, like one yeah. people can just talk about anything we want freely, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right. Uh, okay, so that's the end of that, guys. Um, I think Rich is going to whack this up on his channel as well. So it's great that we got cross pollination going on now, and it all helps everyone. So thank you very much, guys. You guys take care. Thanks for watching, and stay funky. Stay funky. <laughs>